Hello. What it do, ladies and gentlemen. We are here with episode three. Now, I'm assuming all of this should be good live. Forgive me for always doing the intro and just double checking that we are live. Hopefully someone in the chat can confirm that. But otherwise, uh, everything else should just be good to go. Right. I can't quite remember the recap for episode two, but we will get around to that um, maybe just in a bit. But what a great thing because I didn't actually cover this at the very beginning and I think I should go and cover it right now. So we're just jumping straight into it today and just covering absolutely everything. So daily tributes. Uh, something that I haven't spoke about right now is whenever you log into Warframe every day, I think it's on reset or is it every new day? See if I'm on Warframe reset, or it's just at the beginning of, I think it's actually at the beginning of every new day. So for me, I think it's like 1 a.m. right now. Uh, not right now, but it would reset at 1 a.m. is what I'm trying to say. What will basically happen is you'll go and get something called a daily tribute. So it's even worth just logging into Warframe, even if it was just for five minutes, not even five minutes, like two minutes, going and claim your daily tribute. Now, currently, what's actually tied to this is there are some weapons that you can only get from this and there are some um, mods that you can get from it. Um, otherwise, there's a bunch of like cosmetics and there's some very unique things that you can get from daily tributes. Now, whether or not this changes in the future, I have no idea. But right here, right now, I'm going to go ahead and give you a bit of a direction and I'm going to say it because at least I've covered it, you know, so we don't have to do this ever again. But First things first, you can go ahead and get boosters, which is nice. So this is going to give me a resource drop chance booster. I'll explain that maybe a bit more when I get in. So hopefully I can remind myself. But some other things that you can go and get is you can get like platinum discounts. So if you did want to go ahead and spend your money on the game and you wanted to go and buy some platinum, you could go ahead and wait for discounts. They don't come by that often, by all means, um, but you can end up getting... 20% discounts, I think it is, 50% uh, discounts, and even even a maximum of 75% discounts. And 75% discounts, I would definitely consider, if you can, uh, try and pick up a little bit of platinum here and there. Again, it's a way to entice you. If you've got the money, consider it. If you don't and you don't want to go and do it, you don't have to. Please keep in mind, Warframe is a free-to-play game. Everything that I've done in the game, besides from buying cosmetics, is essentially free. So keep that in mind, all right? Anyways... Some of the stuff that you can go in and get, and we'll quickly go ahead and cover it, is weapons and mods. So let's go ahead and cover real quick. Um, there are, and forgive me, I'm going to need to go and get the Wikipedia for this, because I actually want to go ahead and show you guys a visual aids. So remember the Wikipedia? Um, it's good that I can go ahead and use this. What I've typed in here is login rewards. So you can always go ahead and look for this yourself. So here's some like login rewards that you can go and get. Affinity, like all different kinds of things there. Small transport, platinum, so you, 50s. One day discount, two day discounts, token of the Lotus, 20% off, 75%, two day discounts, one day discount, whole bunch of different random kind of discounts you can go and get, um, you can go log in with. Um, will it show me the mods in here is the question. And yeah, it looks like also you, you can get bonuses and days in a row. I didn't even notice. I, I kid you not, I didn't even notice. This is crazy. I didn't know that you'd actually get rewarded if you get days in a row. It would actually go ahead and increase on different rewards. Uh, I only log into Warframe when I'm going to play Warframe. I don't log into Warframe for the sh for the sheer sake of uh, claiming these, but this is actually kind of interesting. Void keys. I don't think that's in the game anymore, is it? Like that's Maybe relics is what you're going to get. Um, I don't think... Is this going to say anything about mods in here? No? Okay. Uh, I don't think it's going to go and say the mods. So I'm going to go and write down the mods anyways. Um, so we're going to go and open up the old notepads. And I'm going to go and write down here. And I'll let you guys go and have a little look at this. So we've got things like Prime Fury. We've got things like Prime's Sure Footed. How many is there? There's Prime's Shreds. And there's Prime's Something. Um, then there's Azima, there's Zenistar, it's Vigor, thank you guys, it's Vigor, I'll explain what these are, don't worry, then there's Zima, there's Zenistar, there's um, Zenith, and there's Sigma and Octanis? I can't remember what the other one is, I think it's that, I can't, I generally can't remember, anyways, 
what will basically happen is i can't remember which ones they are but the point is i'm just going to give you a direction it's like every 100 300 500 700s i'm sure chat can help me out with this one because apparently the thing isn't at a 200 400s 600s i think it's 800s and i think it works like that so every 100 days that you log in, it doesn't have to be in a row, okay? So if you're like, oh God, I've got to log 100 days in the road to go and get this. No, you just got to log in for 100 different days in Warframe, okay? Um, you can end up getting mods. I'm going to, it's reversed. Okay, apparently it's reversed. So this way and then this way. Okay, so these are tied to this and this is tied to this. All right, so you guys can go and see it, which is great. Um, Sigma and Octanis. If I spell it wrong, uh, don't worry if I spell it wrong. Anyways, when it comes towards grabbing these, um, Prime Fury basically gives you, I think it's currently at the moment, 55% attack speeds. Prime Sure Footed gives you 100% knockdown resistance. Uh, Prime uh, Shreds is it's basically fire rate and punch through. I can't remember the values, but don't worry. And Vigor is uh, it's health and shields. Okay. Uh, Azima is a secondary weapon. Um, Zenistar is a melee weapon. Uh, you're going to hear this with disc. I'll explain that in a moment. Uh, Zenith is a primary weapon. This is the one of the only weapons in the game that has, actually has infinite punch through. So long as you can, so long as you can see where the target's marked, you could actually shoot 5,000 meters and hit the target. Yet it's got infinite punch. It can go through anything. It's crazy. Uh, and Sigma and Octanus is a, another melee weapon. It's kind of like a sword and shield, if you will. Um, I think it's a sword and shield, but anyways. So what would I recommend taking? Now, unless this happens to change right now, this is basically your best in slot thing to go ahead and grab. It's just too good. If you can get prime shot footed, try to take it. If you can't get it, what else would I recommend? Again, metas can change, new mods can be implemented. So forgive me, if this happens a year down the line and you're watching, first of all, I thank you guys for checking out the video, even if it's like a year down the line, but um prime Sh prime fury has other competitors right now it's got things like i'm just gonna put in brackets here it's called berserker and it's also called quickening so it's got other competitors prime fury is not something that you need to grab straight away but it doesn't hurt you if you like using a lot of melee feel free to go and take it but do realize it's got competitors as well it's also got things like arcanes that could automatically just do better than it as well so it's kind of kind of hit and miss don't feel like you have to pick this one up straight away shreds it's going to be a bit more niche because again you're looking for fire rate and punch through not all weapons need punch through and not all weapons really want the fire rate just from shreds they might want it from other things so there are other there's a corrupted mod i think it's called file acceleration which can also kind of compete against this so it may not always be best in slot and then vigor now this is where shield gating comes into the equation uh <laughs> i don't know if i'm going to explain shield gating right now um, maybe I should, maybe I should try and explain it a bit later in the episodes, but basically, um, having higher shields is a bit counterproductive and a bit counterintuitive. When you're new to the game, having higher shields probably isn't that bad. So if you look at this and be like, oh, health and shields, that's really good for me. Shields kind of want to be lower, but we can make it work better lower at end game. This may change in the future. I have a video, if you want to, go to my YouTube channel, you can see a video on shield gating. If you want to go and get that explained now, feel free to, but I can explain shields a little bit later um, when we kind of get some more shield mods and I can kind of show it, okay? But otherwise, keep in mind, not all of these are going to be available as your options. Go ahead and pick straight away. Um, so like on day 200, you're only going to see three out of four of these. Forgive me. I don't quite remember if you see Prime Sure footage straight off the bat, but you get the idea. Okay. Uh, from there onwards, when it comes towards the weapons, what would I personally recommend? I'd recommend Zenith personally. If I had to choose one of these weapons out of all of the other ones, Zenith and then after Zenith, I'd go Zenistar because I think Zenith is still kind of fun to use. Um, it's not as meta anymore, but um, basically instead of them, um, instead of you using it like an actual melee, what you'll do is you'll throw a disc out and this disc will kind of sit there and hover and any enemies that come up towards the disc will obviously take damage or damage over time. So you can kind of use it as like an AFK. So you throw your melee weapon out and then carry on shooting. So you see what I mean? So it can actually be kind of cool. 
Um, but Zenith and Sinister would be the two that I recommend. Anyways, it's a quick coverage. There's lots more that you can go ahead and get from login rewards. I'd personally like it if none of this was tied to login rewards. I'll state that personal opinion now, um, mostly because um, things like this are so dominant right now in today's meta. Again, it might not be dominant in the future. So feel free to go and take whatever it is that you want to go and take. Or if you ever catch me live, or if you want to go and leave a comment inside the comment section and ask, hey, yeah, it's a year now, is this still good to take? I'll try and get back around to you. If I don't, maybe someone else will, okay? But anyways, I want to go and talk about daily tributes and login rewards. Um, you can always go and click over here as well. Every so often they give you like little bundles. So if I click here, It'll skip ahead. So on day five, I can get 25,000 credits and a thousand endo, which is really cool. They will give you login rewards for every kind of like particular milestones that you reach. Sometimes it's like 50. It's every 100. You definitely get something like 100, 200, 300, so forth. And then uh, I don't know if they break it down in 50s. I can't quite remember. But anyways, it's still really good. So I'm going to go and just jump back to where we were. I got a resource drop chance booster. Let's go and talk about the drop chance boosters as we go ahead and log in. All right. Aha, uh -huh, we're back. We are back and I'm feeling crispy right now. So drop chance booster. How does this work? What actually is this? So every single time that I go ahead and kill like an enemy, there's um, going to be a way to um, increase the resources um, potential that it goes in and drops. We're not talking about the quantity, how much it drops. So there's two types of resource boosters inside the game. There's drop chance, which is frequency of them actually dropping something. And then there's resource booster itself. So let's go and talk about boosters because boosters are very, very good. What's that noise? Oh, that's the in-game music. I'm sorry, I'm not used to hearing the in-game. <laughs> I was like, what's that noise? So anyways, we got the three day resource booster and then resource drop chance booster. So like I said, this works on things like if you want to go fishing in Plains of Eidolon, you know, like, like the fish come up and everything. Well, go figure, you're going fishing. Um, those fish and the quantity of fish that actually slowly start to surface and you can see you can see more of them if you buy this. This actually affects them. When you're mining in like Plains of Eidolon or Fortuna or so forth, you know those ores that you're looking for, the red and blue veins? Yeah, those come up more frequently if you have this. Only one person in your team, if you're playing with four players, only one person needs to have this active. If one person's got it active, it affects the entire team. Okay. There is also another one in here that you can't quite see, which is called a mod booster as well. Uh, as well. So if you have a mod booster, it actually affects the mod drop chances and it also endo is coded as mods. So in case you don't know, if you look at the farm endo, you can get something called a mod drop chance booster. And that will come from things like sorties or it'll come from things like Archon Hunts. That's way down the line, don't worry. But you can also get that. And if you look at the farm Endo, Endo is coded as mods because obviously it's in mods, right? You need Endo in mods. So if you ever get yourself a mod drop, drop, uh, mod drop chance booster, I would recommend go do some Endo farms because you'll get it for three days. So we got the resource booster. This is about the quantity. Doubles the amount of resources you pick up. If I get one, just one Oricon cell, it will now give me two Oricon cells. Now, this also can double even further. So if Warframe happens to go ahead and give you a, so Warframe's like, hey, here, have a uh, free day um, resource weekend booster. Yeah. So this, this came from DE. This weekend, Friday to Sunday, we get a free day resource. If you also buy this, this stacks on top of this. So this is a read uh, a resource booster. This is a weekend booster. This is a booster. These stack. So instead of you getting one Oricon cell, you get two Oricon cells. Instead of you getting two Oricon cells, you now get four Oricon cells. See what I'm saying? Whenever resource weekends come around, do them. Forget your plans. Forget the wedding that you had to go to. Forget walking the dog, all right? Forget all of those things, okay? You don't have a job anymore. Your job is to now go ahead and farm, all right? Grab your Necros, grab your Cora, go out there, get in the groups and start farming. My goodness, it, it saves so much time. They're one of the best weekends that can happen in Warframe. And believe me, they don't happen often. Oh, oh buddy. So do try and get those. Obviously, the other ones are a little bit more um, explanatory. So if I just type in booster here, we got affinity booster. Affinity boosters can also stack. If they give you a free day affinity weekend booster, affinity booster can stack on top of that. You get the idea. Blessings, relay blessings can also stack on top of these. You can get a lot of boosters stacking on top of each other and so forth. Credit boosters, you get the idea. So hopefully I've explained the boosters as well. If I was new to the game, 
what would I spend money on? I haven't really covered that right now, or I might have covered it a little bit in episode one, but I'll cover it a bit more right now. If I was new to the game, what would I go ahead and prioritize? I would prioritize, obviously, the in episode one, I did cover this, but I'd get Warframe slots and I'd get weapon slots. Outside of Warframe and we weapon slots, um, the other things that I would prioritize are boosters. If I'm just playing an awful lot, if you've got the time to play, always keep a booster ticking. It, it will just help you. It's passive in the background. And if you're going to grind, like, maybe you've got like eight to 10 hours, if you're lucky, if you've got eight to 10 hours going to spend today, farming away, get yourself a booster, right? Really, really, really good and really efficient. But anyways, hopefully that gives you a bit more of an idea. So we covered login rewards and we covered boosters and I've only just started. All right, and I've only just started. So where did we leave off? Where did we leave off? I don't know. So I think, let's go and have a little look. Um, so we had gone through uh, Earth on episode one, Venus on episode two, Mercury, and then we unlocked Mars. And then I think we did a little bit up towards here. We hadn't got the Sergeant killed just yet. So it looks like we're going to be starting off with Phobos and we're going to be focusing on the Ceres Junction because we need to go and kill the Sergeant. And then we also need to go and kill Lieutenant Krill. So right now we're working on assassinate missions. Okay, that's what we're going to be working on. Um, I'm just going to have a little look at my gear because obviously I've just logged on today. All of this, again, is off the top of my head. So the more that I don't remember, the better that it is because the more that I can show you how quick it is for me to pick it up and remember what did I do, where did I go, so forth. Remember, one key advice that I can always go and give you is a notepad. If I need to go and remember where I did leave off, write down what you were doing. Write down what you want to do next. Okay, so I need to go ahead and do the, what is it, Ceres Junction. Get the idea? So I need to go and do that. So whenever I leave the game and maybe I've left it for like three days and I come back and I'm like, oh God, what was I supposed to do again? I can't remember. Ah, Ceres Junction. That will give me direction on what to go and do. So always try and have a little notepad. It's really, really efficient in my eyes. Um, and I encourage you to go ahead and take it. So we did get our MK1 Paris actually ranked up um, and we don't have any mods on it. This is why I'm glad I came back here. Um, so that's a bit unfortunate. So let's go ahead and get some mods back on our weapon then shall we we've only got Stormbringer right now we don't have a lot of things that we can put on here but this is our first level 30 weapon um i'm gonna need this for the assassinate but what i'm gonna try and do is rank this in the meantime i can't really put i already put anything on here i'm gonna go ahead and put I, I generally can't put it. I'm just going to go and put the fast hands in there. Ideally, the 2.5 to Corpus wouldn't be too bad for what I'm about to do. So I'm going to use the Leto. So again, I'm just looking to go and get a bit of Marshy rank out of this if I can. My Exalted Blade's completely maxed out. I can't get Marshy rank from this anymore. So this is completely done. Right now, I would like to try and get some Endo. And this episode is mostly focused on the grinds. I'm going to be playing a lot this episode. I've already explained modding to you guys in episode two. If you did miss it, feel free to go back to episode two. Everything's timestamped and I've explained modding. What kind of mods are you looking for? How would you mod a primary or a secondary? What is it that you're looking to do? What is the meta that we're in? What does status chance mean? What is critical? I've explained all of that. You guys can go back. You can rewatch, all right? But for now, and for right here, we're going to continue off from where we left off. Now, do keep in mind, the Viri Paradox is going to get its own episode. And next episode, episode four, is the Viri Paradox. Everything and anything you need to know about the Viri Paradox. A lot of you guys started from the Viri Paradox. Uh, I'm going to try and cover if I can, every single thing of the very paradox in one episode. So I'll do the quest. I'll do all of the grinding. I'll do everything. Hopefully I can get it all done. If it's a five hour episode, it is what it is. I'll show you what to go and do, where to go and get it, how to go and get it done. Yada, yada, yada. All right. Yada, yada, yada. I don't know if I've explained some other things, but we've got some quests in here that we can go and do. Invasions. I haven't really explained invasions right now. I can explain invasions. Sure. Just whilst I'm here, let me go and explain invasions because you will need these a bit later in case you go and see them up here and you're like, what the hell is that? Um, so invasions. What will basically happen is, do we have the node unlocked? There's an invasion there. When I go and click on invasion, invasions are normally two factions against each other, right? So invasions are normally two factions against each other. Um, you can never side with the invested, uh, infested. As of right now, the three factions inside the game that you will find as of right now inside uh, Warframe is Grinia, Corpus, and Infested. You can never side with the Infested, but you could end up siding with Corpus or you could end up siding with Grenier. So what will happen is sometimes they will actually have two different routes. So if this was Grenier against Corpus, I literally read what they give me on the left and the right. Now, invasions are going to be important for you if you are a new player. You do want to get in the habit of doing them. You will need mutagen masses. You will need 
whoops, you will need like Dead Knight ampules. You'll need a whole bunch of different things. There's a Warframe that you can get from them as well. I believe it's Nyx if she's still there. I can't quite remember off the top of my head. I think it's Nyx. But what will basically happen is in order for you to get this reward, you have to go and do mission one, mission two, and mission three. The mission right now is mobile defense. If it was Grenier over here, it could be exterminate. They're, they're different missions, but either way, you have to go ahead and choose three missions on one side to go and get your rewards. So if Grenier was over here, instead of Mutagen Mass, it could be an Oricon Cell. Which means, do I want Mutagen Mass or do I want Oricon Cell? Right now, I'll tell you, Mutagen Mass would be better for you to go and take. This is a dojo resource. We haven't covered dojos just yet. We will go into that um, because I think dojos will be kind of important to go ahead and get into. Yet alone, it's been so long, I can't even remember how to unlock a dojo. <laughs> Something to do with a key. We'll figure it out later, okay? So uh, just bear with me. But that'll be for like dojo resources as well. My advice to you is if you are playing with a group of friends, create your own dojo. If you've got four players, three players, create your own dojo, have your own space and explore. It will give you more things to do and more things to spend resources into or spend resources into. If you're not playing with a bunch of friends, um, I'd recommend just joining a clan because there's so much going to cover on your own. I wouldn't recommend solo in a dojo. If you want to, go for it. I wouldn't recommend it. We'll cover more uh, dojo at a later point, all right? For now, this is all about entering the grind, okay? So from here onwards, I'm playing, I'm ranking, I'm obtaining, I'm moving, we're shooting, we're getting it all done, all right? So I've got a spy. I need to go towards Iliad, so I'm going to head up here. There is an Arcwing over there, and we do have an Arcwing quest as well. So Arcwing will be interesting to teach you guys about Arcwing, so we'll go and get to that, because I think today's episode should cover it. And I'm going to breathe, because I'm talking a lot, my goodness. You get nicks from evasions. Okay, awesome. Obviously, it should be said, you know, at any point, any kind of advice that I'm giving out here, it could be subject to change. Okay? As of right now, it is exactly how it is, but it could be subject to change. So, spy missions. Um, we've already gone on spy missions before. Spy missions are all about just staying nice and stealthy and keeping yourself hidden from the enemies, right? You just don't want these to be alert. Uh, again, if you want to learn tile sets for spy missions, I always advise stealth frames, all right? Always try and get some stealth frames. Frames like Loki, frames like Ash, frames, frames like um, Ivara are going to be the way for you to help understand where to go and what to do. I am so slow. Sorry, I've just come from my main account and now I'm on this account and I feel so slow. Now, spy missions... Again, the objective is just so long as I don't go ahead and fail the hacks and whatnot, um, we're looking just to kind of skip all of these enemies because they mean nothing to me. But this, oh, this is important. Plasters are actually kind of rare on this planet as well. Um, plasters are more common on things like Saturn. Um, plasters can help me get Rhino if I wanted Rhino as a Warframe. So um, I remember we discussed that last time. Remember, these are the Corpus hacks, so you can just turn them left and right or whatever you want to go and do. I don't like these guys being here, so I'm going to turn that off. And I'm just going to get rid of these guys. As you can see, Corpus with their shields, it's a bit harder for my weapons to go ahead and deal with right now. My bow would deal with these a lot better, but my bow's even puncture. So if you have a weapon that's impact, impact would be a bit better against the corpus at the beginning because impact does bonus damage against shields, right? So we're going to take this one nice and slow. There's no rush here. I want you guys to go and see what I'm doing and where I'm going. Jump over this. Take it nice and slow if you want to. We're just going to pay attention to where the lasers are. Damn, that was a good security. So I've actually triggered the alarm. A few different ways you can go and do this next part. I'm basically going to go and jump up and over um or you can go under and i'm basically going to go ahead and roll all the way over towards this it's not a breakable vent so that's fine i'm going to drop down this doesn't actually matter if i go through that oh wow i'm actually not gonna get this right now no because this takes me back to the beginning i have not done a good job on this one forgive me most cunning founder <laughs> Is that? This is the one I am thinking of, right? Because there's normally a laser here that you can go and break down. Is 
Did that just open? Oh, I think it was because I had the alarm. I think I needed to get rid of the alarm first and then I could get in. This one seems a bit... Have they changed this? I think they might have changed this. I'm not too sure. Even though I'm thinking of a completely different tile set. Normally when you come across this area, what will happen is you have like openings kind of on the sides and you'll be able to utilize those openings. Um, on this one, it doesn't seem like you have the openings. So this takes you down here, right? Yeah, that's actually so weird. I don't think I've ever... I've never had it where it's just this here. So I'm not used to that. Otherwise, there's a vent at the top that you should be able to go and break and go down if you want to. But hey, there you go. That's unfortunate. Sorry, I didn't show that one very well. I'm not going to lie. That kind of caught me off guards. I don't normally see them like that. There's no shame in that. Okay, do remember, it doesn't matter if I go ahead and fail uh one of these because remember on last episode i talked about uh drop rotations do you remember drop rotations and how they work um failing one here doesn't do anything for me it basically just means that i don't get rotation c in the rewards because for spy it's a b and c for rotations again we covered that last episode if you are interested i'll try and get in these little cubbies as you can see here and then the idea is i want to get down towards that one so i'm going to wait for this one to go past uh, you can go up that way as well. You can go up this way. There's a few different ways you can go and take that one. Or you can just hack the door. It's up to you. Um, so I'm going to go and take this route for this one. Oh my goodness. I'm just going to out. And then we're just going to drop down. Okay. No one cares, buds. Right. And then this one. So two here. So I'm going to go and link that. And then remember, you can right click and left click to move these around. So whichever way you want to go ahead and learn it, it's up to you. We spoke about Nightwave, so you can see at the bottom there, I'm getting hacker on the commands. We spoke about Nightwave again in, in the most recent episode, if you are interested to learn more about that. What is Nightwave and why you should be doing it and everything. Just trying to recap everything that we also did from uh, last episodes. I should have wrote it down in my notes. But last episode was, was a bit of a big... Oh, last episode was a bit of a big one for explaining mechanics inside the game. Like a lot of mechanics. So, um... There we go. Uh, this one is... Shame I don't have my bow because I could do this a bit more stealth. See, when I saw the... Um... Oh, you can't break this vent. Nobody can go and just break that vent and skip through that room. So I can't technically drop through this. Pardon me. So I'm going to have to go back on myself. And that door's locked, so we're going to go this way. Is there the route back there? I think I'm thinking of different tile sets. I'm going to go and hack this because I don't think they do enough damage to me yet. So I can just safely hack. I might die here on this one though. I need to get rid of some of these ads. I still got 20 seconds so we're okay. I'm going to use up all my energy to try and get rid of those. Okay, we're good. And then no rush, absolutely no rush, just to show you, like, take your time, all right? I'd much rather you guys go and get it correct and, f or, like, fail trying to get it correct than you guys panic and be like, oh, my God, what are they? Just slow down. It's okay. you got plenty of time. Oh, you got plenty of time unless it kicks you out like that. Oh, I tried to, like, speed run that with just three seconds left. But even then, all it basically means, I've not failed the mission. I've only got rotation A out of a potential rotation C, okay? So... Technically, it's still a mission win. Um, do keep in mind, though, that I think if you fail all three of them, I think it's all three. I can't quite remember. Uh, it could turn into an exterminate mission. So that's going to be kind of annoying because we don't want to do extra objectives. Otherwise, more plastids. We'll take that. And more ally. We'll take that. Otherwise, we're good. We only get rotation A, but we can leave a rotation A. That's fine. Mission's still complete. No sweat. Get a bit of Morphix in there, a bit of Rubido as well, a bit of Oxium. Now, Oxium, you're going to need quite a fair bit of this, all right? Um, Oxium is going to come from um, mostly, you know those like drones that kind of fly around in the air uh, on Corpus? Oxium's mostly going to drop quite a fair bit from those guys, and you want to go ahead and basically gather as much Oxium as you can. Um, <laughs> it can be kind of annoying to acquire Oxium, all right? It can be kind of annoying. I do have a marshy rank test available. I should always try and get this done early. So we're going to go straight into the next marshy rank test. 
And uh, as I was so graciously noted, so I talked about how you could practice Marshy rank tests inside uh, the, uh, what's it called? Uh, when you go to relays, you can go to where Cephalon Simorous is. You can go to the right hand side. You can go over there. However, you can also go and click practice down here. So I was actually uh, notified of that one. That being said, though, I know that this one's going to be quite easy to go and do, but I would always go ahead and consider doing this. All right. Otherwise, we're going to go and begin test right here. Just saw it out of the corner of my eye. I didn't verify my account. No. Show me God the damn it. The old ways. Sorry, I was going to go and do trading, wasn't I? And I'm going to show you guys trading. And I forgot to verify my account. So this one's just on melee. So the first mastery rank test was all to do with... Um, first mastery rank test was all to do with primary. Second one was all to do... Uh, or the second one was all to do with secondary. And the third one's to do with melee. So these shockwave mowers, if you stand too close to them, they'll kind of stomp the ground as well. You can just jump over that without being knocked over. Just because I don't think I ever covered it as a tip. So whenever you go and see mowers or something try to stomp, try to jump over it. You can jump and glide and just take it nice and slow if you need to. Or just try and nuke them completely down if you need to as well. Oh. There it is there. So I got knocked down by that. But as you can see, Marshy rank three is completed. Doesn't really matter. We just go and brute force it as well. Okay. This test is now complete. So more daily standing, more base mods, more void traces. This is great because I think Marshy rank three unlocks something, does it? Do, have we unlocked syndicates now? I don't know. I'm excited. Let's go and see if we've unlocked syndicates. We have. We've unlocked syndicates. This is fantastic. Oh, I'm so glad that we get to go and talk about this now. So this is quite important. This is quite important. Let's go ahead and cover syndicates. There will be a timestamp right here for everything you need to know about syndicates as well. So what are syndicates? Now that we've reached Marshy rank three right now, we've now unlocked this thing just to the left of our navigation over here. Okay. Syndicates. You can pled allegiance. Now, please keep in mind, I'm probably going to get one thing wrong in this. They've changed it and they've actually made it way easier to do these. Um, back in my day, <laughs> back in my time, they were much different they were still the same execution but well sorry they were still the same uh, concept but they were different execution right let's go ahead and break this down as of right now there's a particular route that a lot of people are going to encourage you to take for the sheer sake of it i'm going to encourage you to take it because if i don't see it someone else will okay so keep that in mind when it comes towards these what should you take who are these what is going on I'm going to give this in the most weirdest way. I think I can go and say this word as well. I'm pretty certain I can, but I don't know if it's going to be considered TOS. They're basically like gangs, but not not violently, but they're basically like gangs. Imagine that, right? You're basically representing someone. Every, every uh, faction here basically has an ally, has a neutral, and has an enemy, okay? That's kind of how it works. I think an easier way to somewhat understand this is the three on this side are kind of like more together and the three on this side are kind of more together. Not entirely true, but it's just easier to kind of remember it that way, okay? However, what we're going to do is we're going to take Steel Meridian, okay? Uh, visit them in a relay? Sure. So we haven't met them just yet. We're going to follow exactly what it teaches me because this is going to be interesting. I haven't seen this in years. In years. Um, syndicates are definitely worth focusing on. Okay, they're definitely worth focus on. Please try and get your syndicates done because again, they're passive in the background and this is where the daily standing is going to start uh, coming into play because you saw that every time I ranked up in Marsha ranking, I was unlocking something called daily syndicate standing. Like, what was that? I got 500 of it just a minute ago. This is where it comes into play now. So we're going to talk to, I think it's Tessa, is it? I think this is Tessa. Um yeah so what's going to basically happen here is we're currently neutral with them right and i believe that we've i don't know if we've actually straight up pledged right now we'll find that out in a second but you can end up going against them and when you go against them um can i see i can't see allies or anything i don't think it's in this window that i can see it but i'll show you but basically as i continue to rank up with this one so i go up here 
there's another faction that goes down. And as they go down, they'll start hunting you. Every so often, you'll be attacked by particular enemies that will just come in hordes. And they're always Eximus enemies as well. We've spoken about Eximus enemies, I believe, in episode one. And I think we touched about it briefly in episode two. But besides, if you guys are playing Warframe, you now know an Eximus enemy is. You already know what it is anyways. So anyways, we're going to go and go with neutral. So yeah, I think right now I am pledged to them. And the idea is I'm going to have to rank up with them. So I need 30,000 credits, which I do have, which is great. And I need two Morphics. But I need to go and get 5,000 standing. Okay. Uh, inside here, I'll explain about the standard. Oh, here we go. I can't hide my... Wait, let me hide my camera. Here we go. So on the left-hand side, Allied is Red Veil. So whenever I rank up and whenever I gain um, standing with... Uh, still Meridian, Red Veil vale are also gaining standing, right? Now, Opposed is going to be New Loka. They're not really... They don't, they're kind of in the middle of you, basically. So you got someone with you, you got someone against you, and so forth. And then you'll have someone kind of neutral. So the other two are basically neutral. And then down here, Perrin. So Perrin really do not like it if I go Steel Meridian, okay? Now, the reason why we go Steel Meridian... So let's just get straight to the point right now. Why am I telling you to go Steel Meridian? Um, so what I want you to do is go up to the search bar and I want you to type in H-E-K, okay? This thing here. This gives you 200% multi-shot. If you remember in my recent episode, episode two, I was talking about multi-shot. What is multi-shot? Now, if you don't remember, I'm going to go and re-juggle re your memory. Multi-shot is basically a way to go and get bonus damage, like an extra shot, but for the cost of no extra ammo. Imagine it like that. So you're basically getting free damage. And multi-shot is near enough always going to be best in slot on all your primaries and all your secondaries. This right here is 200% multi-shot, but for a particular weapon called the Heck. Heck, we need to be Marshy rank 4. But what we want to do is start slowly progressing towards this. That, on a shotgun that does pellets, that's 200%. That's an extra a lot. So if it shoots, was it four pellets on base? I think it is. Uh, adding this towards it, is that going to be 12? I think it's like 12 pellets or something like that. That's now going to come out. It's basically really going to absolutely dump uh, straight into them, which I think is fantastic. Okay. So scattered justice is going to be something that you'll hear a lot of content creators take. If you happen to go in here of something called Tigress back in the day, it was a long time ago. You can still do Tigress, don't get me wrong, but heck right now is looking for a really good weapon for you to go ahead and just take out bosses. If you're struggling with bosses, if you're struggling with bigger tanky units, this is going to be what you're going towards, okay? So now what we want to go and do is slowly start ranking these guys up, okay? Now, still Meridian are kind of like defected and rejected kind of Grenier, okay? So you'll notice that like, see, I'm kind of with them. Why are they friendly? Who are they? Imagine like defected and rejected Grenier. Okay, so these are not friends with the Grenier. They don't like the sisters, which you'll get to way later. They don't like all of that stuff. So uh, we're going to kind of ally with them. So there's a little bit of lore behind each and every single one of them. So we've met them. I think we're just going to go and leave here now. Um, so what I want to go and do, I believe once you've pledged your allegiance... Yeah, you lose standards in the because we're pledging it. That's fine. Click. Here we go. So we've met them. Pledged to earn 15% of affinity as standing for Steel Meridian. What used to happen, and if anybody told you this one beforehand, what used to happen is it used to be you would have to apply sigils to you straight off the bat. You don't have to do that anymore. So the sigils are kind of purely just cosmetic. Um, you used to have to scale your sigils. So if you're a returning player and you're watching this going, oh God, I remember something about this, but how did it work? You know those sigils that used to like quip on your like front or your back? I'll show you in a second, but you used to equip on the front and back. You don't have to equip those anymore. This will now just automatically give you 15% of converted affinity. Uh, affinity? Affinity. This is really, really good. Basically, to explain this a bit quicker, just kill. Okay. That's all it is. We pledge to them. I'm now, I've now joined this gang. Just kill, okay? You will slowly start ranking up with them, okay? You can rescind it if you go ahead and click again, or you can slowly convert over to the other ones. Sooner or later, you will slowly get in the habit of unlocking all of them and checking their rewards, okay? That's what you'll end up doing. Now that I've pledged, when I now go and click on this screen, what are you doing? I pledged. All right, you're in. Now, <laughs> 
Oh, am I not gonna? Okay. <laughs> Once I get a little bit of rank in here, um, you'll go ahead and get this screen here. So it will now start looking like this. Wow, that looks so off center. I don't like that. But you'll now start seeing it will look like this. So when you hover over them, this is the view. Get used to this view. Also, any other factions that you unlock will slowly be included in here as well. If you ever want to visit a faction a little bit quicker, you can always go and click on the faction that you want and then click visit still Meridian. This will take you straight to them if you want to. If you want the rewards, they're right up here, and then the rest of it is all in here. But as of right now, we need to rank up with them and we've pledged to them, so all we need to go and do is basically just kill, all right? That's all we need to go and do right now. We don't need to change pledge, so off we go. Now, this is daily, so it resets every day. I've got 17,000 17, scales with your Marshy rank. The more Marshy rank that you have, the more daily standing you get to invest into this. And this standing, and standing in general, is quite important when you get to something called focus farming, but we get to that way, way, way later, okay? So if you ever hear of that term, we'll get to it later. So now that we've done that, you want to activate that as soon as possible because now every kill and every bit of affinity that I gain from here onwards is ranking them up, which is fantastic, all right? So we did the spy mission. Over here, we got a capture. That's nice and easy to go and do. Let's go and do the capture. Then we got one more here and then we got the uh, sergeant over there. Here on a capture mission. You must find capture. Radio then. Oh. Sometimes I kill these domestic drones because they can drop a repair mod for your companion. And if you don't have the repair mods, um, it could be a good way to heal you. I should have rolled through that, sorry. I didn't actually see it until like last seconds. So remember these missions, all we go and whoops. Okay. All we go and do is literally take this guy down. We don't care about any other enemy here. We take this guy down. And that is it. Now, I might get change of plans. Remember, I covered this in one of the previous episodes. We actually got a change of plans. Um, but so far, I haven't got it, which is great. Sometimes I'm just going to break some canisters and get some materials just whilst I'm running. I might break one of these every so often to get like, maybe a chance for an, a Cyan Star or an Amber Star. We did go over Cyan Stars before as well, I believe. I didn't get the mod from it. Having a little look for these. So again, all these enemies don't really mean too much to me right now. If you're looking for affinity, kill them. Because again, now that we got the syndicate, we do want to be killing them. As of right now. There's the repair kit. So there's the mod there. Just wanted to show it on screen. It's going to give you a bit of heal rate towards your sentinel. And it's a good mod to go ahead and throw onto your sentinel. If your sentinel gets hurt, it can actually go ahead and just heal your sentinel. So it's not too bad, but I just wanted to go and show that on screen. And now we're out. So we want to go and shoot the rumbers every so often. Awesome. So look, now look in here, see this? Look, now it's starting to change a little bit. Minus 26 to new Loka, plus 51 to still Meridian, plus 26 to Veil, minus 51 here. So as you can see, we've now got this on our screen as well. We'll get a lot more things on the screen over time, all right? Over time. Okay, so this is awesome. We got that done. On to the next mission. Uh, we got a rescue over here. Um, yeah, this should just be fine. So we go straight into it. So we got the fisher there as well. It looks like we've unlocked Meso fishers. So if you guys remember in the previous episode, I talked about relics. What are relics? Where do you get them? How to obtain them? Rotation and missions and so forth. There was a lot that we learned last episode. If you didn't see it, I honestly really recommend to go check it out. There was so much that we covered. Uh, but we're now actually slowly, because we got over here, we've now actually slowly started unlocking uh, the Meso relics as well, which is great. So this is going to be a different tier of relic that we're going to be getting. So we're going to do a rescue and then we've got to go and kill the sergeant. As I've mentioned before, the sergeant is a very easy boss to go ahead and take on. All right, so don't panic too much. Uh, run your best weapon whenever it comes to assassination missions. Um, always try and run your best weapon. The weapon that you've got most mods in, the most available capacity, all of that good stuff. Because uh, you're going to want to um, nuke them down. as i keep running uh, hi everybody who's joined the live stream i hope you guys are doing well sorry that i can't answer everything and i can't double check everything again i'm in like commentary modes oh look at this Ooh, spoilers Ooh. you meet those a bit later 
Although, if you've already done Fortuna before my episodes, then that's okay. You've already met those. They're called Ratkas. Right, so I think this one is over here, right? Yeah, there it is. And then we just drop inside. So that's the quicker way of getting inside here, if it lets me in. No one there. Oh, they've changed the, the look of this. I, don't, I haven't done that many rescue missions lately, but I like how they've changed the look of this. It would have been with um, Deadlock Protocol update. This is really cool. I'm really enjoying doing this series, by the way, guys. I'm not joking you. Like, this series is really fun to do because I'm kind of, like, re-exploring re my love for Warframe and also seeing parts of the game that I just don't see anymore because when you kind of get to end game, you'll focus on different things. So um, it's kind of cool because, man, Warframe's changed so much. Sometimes you don't realize just how much it has changed. Really, really cool. Okay, very cool. Done. Right, so we did the rescue mission. So we got that done. Oh, that's pretty cool. That was also part uh, of my uh, night waves going to do, which means it'll be quite a lot that I can gain from that. We spoke briefly about Spectres before, haven't we? I believe so, yes. I think that was in episode one or episode two we spoke about Spectres. I think at some point we are going to need to go and craft them. I'm pretty certain it's one of the junction crafts that you need to go ahead and craft a Spectre. And if we don't get it done, then we're kind of locked out because Spectres take like six hours to go ahead and do which is a bit annoying anyways look we are now on the sergeant so what i need to go and do is quickly go get my bow back because my bow is currently my strongest weapon so i'm gonna go and jump back on this although i don't have an awful lot of things as you can see there's nothing fancy in here um i don't really have an awful lot available but uh, also damage the corpus i'm gonna throw this in so it's multiplicative damage um don't worry about that we we've, we've covered that in the most recent episode as well so we're gonna go ahead and kill the sergeant once we go and kill the sergeant once he's done we only need to go and kill a lieutenant krill as well so we're going to be getting him done uh, right after the sergeant um if you ever need to do any assassination missions as of right now so again uh what's the date right now so maybe i'll keep keep you guys in uh inclined so we're currently may 31st 2023 okay currently may 30 21st oh no, 31st 2023 as of right now, Sergeant is arguably one of the easiest bosses. Not only A, to get to, but B, to go ahead and farm if you need to do, like, assassination missions for any reason. So there's a Night Wave that comes through, and the Night Wave challenge says to assassination missions. Just go ahead and run this mission, okay? Because he's very, very easy to go and kill. Oh, God damn it. I keep looking for all of the. I'm just keeping my eyes for all of this. Again, I'll always continue to encourage you guys. If you can go ahead and kill enemies, spend your time killing enemies. Don't just do what I'm doing and skip every single little thing. Uh, I'm only doing this to help speed up the series a little bit. And also in the times that I'm not kind of, you know, doing the series. So yeah, I do this currently every Wednesday right now. But if you guys are playing um, um, like kind of alongside my playthrough as well, then uh, does this affect them? He just got one shot. Unbelievable. Um, what was I gonna go and say? Oh yeah, spend your time training as well. You know, like in the in the whenever you guys are waiting for the next episodes, um, go train, go do some survival missions, some defense missions, stuff like that. Go look for particular mods that you need. Try and get some endo. All of that good stuff, you know. That's gonna be uh, really good for you, and it'll pay off. So uh, definitely try and look towards those things. These are going to be interesting to talk about a bit later nullifiers because i don't think i've actually talked about the drones of them and uh, i want people to get that tip about nullifiers um particular tip oh there's a fragment there we've gone over fragments before remember going to scan them just because I'm, I'm about to go and leave the mission anyway so i'm just checking for like any last second loot oh this here we go so you see this right here if you go and shoot this down it will slowly decrease it in size however if you've got a high fire rate weapon, I would shoot the bubble. If you've got a low fire rate weapon, I would shoot the drone. I don't know why his drone has gone so far down right now. There's too many enemies here. I might die trying to show this. Ouch. See the drone there? 
Oh my god, please just... I'm probably dead. I'm just gonna leave. There's a drone above his head, like above his shields. If you've got a low fire rate weapon, shoot the drone, okay? If you break the drone, he cannot summon any more uh, drones from there onwards. He can never get a bubble again. If you break the drone, you can never get a bubble again. If you don't break the drone, but you shoot his bubble, his bubble decompresses in size, it minimalizes, but his drone goes back in his backpack and he's safe. He can resummon the drone, but it's on a cooldown. That's the difference with nullifiers. My advice to you is to always get in the habit of killing the drone if you can. Is this the first stalker? No, this is the second stalker. So if you guys remember in one of the previous episodes, we did get stalker that was with the jackal and he did turn up. I believe he turned up. And unfortunately, I think we died to him. I could be, I'm pretty certain we did do that, right? But anyways, um, because that happens, um, we now, uh, we now don't want to die to this one. I think we tried to melee him and I think we died trying to melee him. Um, so I have to be a little bit careful there. So I'm going to go back to my Braddon right now as well. Because uh, I'm going to go and train my Braddon up as I move across. So I've got right here, I've got Sabotage. We're going to do Sabotage. We're going towards War right now. And then from War, uh, we're going to go up towards the Junction. And then we've unlocked Ceres. Ceres is going to be one of the very first Warframes that I want to go ahead and prioritize and unlock. Um... Um, so we will go over that in a moment. What was this? I didn't pay attention. I was mobile defense. Sure, we'll take some salvage. At this rate, like I said, I'll take like absolutely anything I can get my hands on, especially Morphix. If you see Morphix, they're kind of rare. So try and get yourself Morphix. And we've spoken about the plants before, if you guys remember. Go ahead and get your uh, plant scanning done. Okay, a friendly reminder to go ahead and keep up with those. Whenever you see a plant, try and go ahead and just get a couple of scans done. Okay, yeah, so this is something that I noticed. You see how I got one more fix there? On some of them, I'm getting two more fix. It's because the drop chance booster is kicking in. And instead of getting one, I'm getting two. So this drop chance booster... Um, we'll try and pay attention to it. It's easier to see on the Morphix right now. Sometimes I'm getting one, sometimes I'm getting two. And uh, I just wanted to go ahead and make sure that that was clear because we spoke about boosters at the beginning of this episode and about how boosters work. I'm just taking my time a little bit more to kind of roam around here. Also just looking for other things in case I can showcase anything that's like new, any tips or tricks that I can give you guys. There we go. We'll take all this salvage. I, I'm, I'm going to echo it every single time I go into a mission. God forbid, guys. Oh. God forbid, guys. If you can, try and kill your enemies, all right? Don't worry about what I'm doing. I'm just speeding things up. You can always pause this video. You can always come back to it. You can always skip ahead at any point. But overall um, if, it's, if i haven't said it already so far today but if you guys are enjoying the video and if you guys do enjoy this series the only way that i'm going to end up continuing this series is if i know that it is actually helping people so if it does help you leave a like uh, you can do it whilst we're live right now you can go and hit the like button um or whenever the video uh goes uh public uh, after it's done you can also go and press the like button it doesn't cost you anything to go and hit like like and it will help um hopefully other people go ahead and engage in analytics so when people come over, hopefully they're going to have a little look at the lights. And if it is generally helpful, then it gives them an idea, right? So the more the more that you guys can go and support me doing this, the more that I can uh, consider, you know, trying to make more and more time for it in the future. I'm going to take a couple of kills here. One, because uh, I can train my weapon. And two, because I can also get the Syndicate. Remember the Syndicates that we just got? The Still Meridian? I'm just going to try and get a little bit of affinity here as well, if I can. It's not the best of damage, unfortunately, but damage is damage. It doesn't really matter. 
We're just going to take a couple of kills here. We're technically done with the mission because it was a sabotage, so we're done there. I don't know if I spoke about that, but yeah, once you hack that, just pop those canisters. <laughs> I feel like I didn't really explain that. I apologize. But yeah, we just got a couple of kills there. That'll do. I'm sure I'll have to do a survival or a defense at some point. And when I do survival and defenses, I like to rank up my weapons more so then. Um, also, I forgot to go and do a relay blessing. So we should go to a relay. And if I'm lucky, I know I'm kind of using and abusing my chat here. <laughs> Sorry about that one. But again, do go ahead and head off to relays and get yourself relay blessings um, because they are extremely helpful for you. Uh, I might just have to ask my a live stream audience if I could cheekily steal a affinity uh, blessing from somebody so that I can also kind of rank up my guns a little bit better. And like I said, you can get this at any point. Like, don't feel like you... Uh, I feel like that you can't get it. It's completely free to go ahead and get. So um, let's go to a relay because it can also just help me rank things up a bit quicker here. So we're currently 649 out of 5,000. Again, doing more like longevity kind of missions. So things like endurance runs, uh, defenses, interceptions, excavations, survival, so forth. This will be better for us to go ahead and train in that early as of right now. Um, I believe there was a... Somebody pointed it out earlier, but I can't remember where they pointed it out. Might honestly be one of these, so we won't worry about that just yet. Uh, anyways, let's keep going towards... Oh, no, let's go, go to a relay. So we're going to go to Strata Relay, and we're going to go to Strata 4, okay? Strata Relay, Strata 4. And if there's anybody who could give me an affinity blessing, I'd be very thankful. If there's anybody else who also wants to give me a damage blessing, I'd be very thankful. <laughs> My damage is... Actually, maybe don't give me a damage blessing. I feel like I'm trolling. Don't give me a damage blessing. But I'd take an affinity blessing if anybody's here. Maybe a credit blessing if anybody else wants to bless. So there's quite a few different things that when you reach Marshy rank 30 in Warframe, um, you can basically bless relays. We spoke about this uh, in one of the previous episodes. And um, some of the blessings that you can go and do is affinity. You can do credits. You can do damage. You can do shields. Uh, you can do... Um, resource drop chance is it i can't remember if it's resource drop chance you can do that as well so there's quite a few different ones you can go and get i'm mostly always looking for affinity and if i can get credits as well this would be nice for this account i don't think i should take damage because then i feel like i'm kind of if you want damage that's fine take damage but i kind of want to play this you know through thank you gg so there's affinity i might just wait to see if a credit blessing does come through i'll see if i can wait a second yeah, I realize, I, re I realize I'm using my live stream right now, so forgive me for being a little bit cheeky here. But like how I've explained multiple times, guys, you can literally just wait in relays. Just grab a cup of tea, grab a coffee, like put yourself in a relay, go downstairs for a minute. Do you know what I mean? Grab yourself a cup of tea, grab a coffee, whatever you guys, whatever your selection of choices, go and drink, go get some food or something, you know? Then come back up and then just press escape, hover over here and see what blessings you've got. All right? You'll get blessings. Uh, I'm going to wait for like maybe 30 more seconds. If I don't get a different blessing here, it's okay. But I'm just going to see if anybody is blessing relays. Yeah, you can always go and use local chat to go ahead and ask and say, hey, is there any, if there's anybody who could do a relay blessing, that'd be nice. You know, thank you very much. Um, but yeah, they, there's, it's completely free for Marshy Ranks to go ahead and do. Ooh, there's a resource drop chance blessing there, which kind of stacks with the other drop chance that I've got. Oh, there's a credit as well. Thank you so much. Right. Okay, this is kind of cheeky, but look at that. So I've got a resource, I've got a credit, and I've got a uh, affinity. So three hours, I've got those four. Lovely. Really, really good. And again, like I said, you could get things like shields. You could get damage. There's a few other different things that you could go ahead and acquire as well. Okay. But for now, that's actually going to help me. So I'm really glad that um, we got those. If that was any of you guys in chat, thank you guys very much. Thank you very, very much. Right. So we carry on. We're going to get towards war. This is going to be the next assassination boss fight, Lieutenant Krill. And um, we'll go ahead and show you what you're doing for Lieutenant Krill. Okay. Our intel suggests that 
our person of interest is in the vicinity, search for the hostage and bring them home. I think this might now be... Can you remember I was talking about Morphix and I was saying instead of getting one, I was getting two because of the drop chance blessing, uh, because of the drop chance booster that I got for a login rewards. This may now mean I think I have a very small chance of it, but instead of me getting one Morphic, instead of me getting two Morphics, I might be able to get three because I also got a relay blessing on top of the other blessings. So I'm going to try and see if I can find some Morphics to show you what I mean. There's Gallium there. I got one Gallium. Gallium's going to be good as well. We're going to need a a bit of galley. Remember those sensors in the doors? We want to go and shoot those down. What is this mission? I wasn't... Oh, it's uh, spy. Uh, it's rescue. Sorry. Some salvage there. I'm just looking for more fix. Just want to show you that, you know, how the boosters are working since this episode is kind of covering boosters. Surprised I didn't actually cover boosters in the previous episodes. I feel like I should have done... And hopefully at this time, your movement's becoming a bit more fluid in the game uh, for all of the people who are playing uh, with me from the very beginning episodes. How are you finding your movement so far? Are you starting to understand it a bit better? Try to not be afraid to experiment in your movement. And uh, one thing I can always advise for you guys... Oh, there's a Morphic there. One sec. Can I get free from this? No, I only got one, so I didn't get lucky with any of that. Um, but try to... Um, use tap you see how i'm like constantly tapping aim glides because it will just help you like slow yourself down and reposition but um aim glides is if you hold it down you'll run out of it but if you tap it it kind of like de-accelerates you and then your the velocity of you is going to re-accelerate and then you can de-accelerate it again so just by tapping it every so often it's a good idea to go ahead and take it it helps your control i'm really looking for these morphics huh i don't want to spend too much time looking for morphics but just want to see that I can go ahead and get free here. The chance of me getting it, though, is generally quite slim. So keep that in mind. Just one on that one as well. So these drop, these drop chance uh, blessing and booster aren't in my favor right now. But this is what we mean by drop chance, you know? It's not guaranteed. It's just helpful. Like I said, as long as you've got one person in the group with it, everybody benefits from it. I should have a lot of these Rux Claws now, so I don't think I'll have to scan too, too many more, which is nice. Alright, we'll just try and focus on the mission now. Yeah, I'm like three minutes in and I haven't found any spare Morphics, so I'm just going to go do the mission. Friendship doors. So we're just going to slide all the way over the top of this guy. Hopefully he doesn't see me there. So I'm not going to make any noise. I'm just going to go past him. Nothing in there. Take your time, see? Take your time. Now he sees me, but it's too late. And we're out. See how I'm still using his slash dash to our advantage? So if you're on Vault, and if you took Vault as your option, use your second ability. You can run a bit quicker. Um, unfortunately, Mag doesn't really have a way to go ahead and speed herself up as much as what Excalibur and uh, Vault does. But um, as you can see, that was nice and easy. Oh, we're kind of locked out, so I just need to quickly go do this. Lovely. Sorry, bud. I didn't even see him there. He just, he was in the line of fire. That's just how it goes, you know? That's just how it goes. But again, we're still working on Still Meridian right now, so this is really good. And we're getting some XP across here. This is almost ranked up as well, which is, which is great. So we get the affinity ranking out of that. Right, so now I need to switch back over to my bow. We're going to take on Lieutenant Krill. You'll meet a few um, military rankings, I should go and say. Um, so you'll get things like Captain Four. You'll get things like uh, Lieutenant Krill. You'll get things like, um, well, Sergeant. <laughs> um, but there's... Uh, is he Sergeant Sargus Ruck? Or I can't quite remember if he is. Um, but you'll get a few different kind of um, rankings that go ahead and work together in here. What am I doing? Ah, oh, uh, I need the bow. Shame I don't have toxin just yet. 
when we get toxin uh we'll be able to go and do corrosive and corrosive like how i've already spoke about in the previous episode it's gonna be really really good but as of right now we've only got electric to go and take on him this will be the last thing that we need for the series junction so we're on good pace right now although we could be on a bit quicker pace um so we just need to kind of stop messing about and just keep going right so lieutenant krill time so ideally if you do not have the frame that i am currently playing this is 2023 okay 2023 if you do not have this frame called excalibur if you started off with mag if you started off with vault this is how you're going to work on getting excalibur okay man you talk so much lotus actually kind of crazy how much you talk right now please be quiet um so yeah this is going to be the way for you to go ahead and get excalibur um you used to be able to get frost here um but frost changed so if you see some old guides um if the guide tells you oh this is where you get frost as unfortunately it's out of date um you no longer get frost from here you get frost from series instead instead you'll now get excalibur from here which is really good so if you took mag or you took uh volt and you're like oh um i want to play excalibur how you're playing him he looks kind of fun yeah in case that is what you're thinking then that's fine um you're basically gonna farm this boss so let's explain what, what this boss does and how to take him on i got two more fixes on that one not one so here's lieutenant krill i'll just let the cutscene go in boom the Tenant Krill is all about that hammer mechanic that you just saw there. You basically want him to hit the ground. Uh, let's go and kill some of these enemies so I don't have to deal with them. Um, and we're going to end up shooting the back of him that has a glowing spot. Now, there's a huge misconception. This might even catch one person out in chat. Um, a lot of people would always say, shoot his pipes. Do not misunderstand what they meant by that. Because for years... I thought, you see the pipes there? I thought you actually had to shoot those pipes. You do not. What you have to shoot is the glowing blue p thing on his back. Now, I would try and make him swing first and then shoot his back. And then when you shoot his back, his pipe, see that? Kind of breaks. Get off me, please. I had too many enemies on me. See how I use my thing. So basically, you shoot the glowing uh blue aura on his backpack instead and then when he swings to hit the grounds he'll freeze he basically like kind of doesn't have the ventilation he's trying to juggle between cold and hot to stop the ventilation so uh, there's too many enemies here. there's too many enemies just do what i'm doing and just slowly pick them off so you want to change the i don't know what color this changed to by the way but, um maybe someone in chat can tell you what color it changes to but uh, when you shoot it it should change color and then don't make him swing. Stand away from him. See this? Look, I stand away from him. He'll do the hammer swing when I'm away from him. And now I go behind him. I'm going to try and get just a bit more damage off there. He goes orange. Thank you, guys. So my taxon's kind of freezing him, which is, I guess, great. Because look, if it slows him down, it makes it easier for me to shoot it. But if you stand next to him, what will happen is he swings like this constantly. Don't make him swing constantly. Once you've, once you've popped the color and you've changed the color on the back and you've popped the, the pipe, now stand away from him. Because he'll do this like... So if I go next to him, he'll do that swing again. We don't want him doing that. But sometimes he's just going to blitz you, so be a bit careful. There you go. And he should end up doing this. Uh... Did I not pop that? Perfect. How many pipes does this guy have? Stay focused. There's a heavy unit I think this is, there's an X amount of times that you need to go ahead and do it. I think that's his last pipe. I think it's four pipes that he has. It's either three or four. I always thought he had three. So I think he had four. So I'm going to do this one more time. Right, he's going to swing, he's going to miss, he's going to freeze. And then what will happen is he will now become vulnerable. Okay, so he's got no more pipes to basically vent himself. I need to kill this guy. Please leave me alone. So like now he engulfs, engulfs in flame and I'm just going to do this to him. Oh, I rolled into it. I've just killed myself. I'm going to lose energy. So I'm just going to keep brute forcing into him right now. 
There you go. And we've killed him. We got Cryo Rounds, which is pretty cool. That is how you fight him, all right? Just so that everybody is aware of that, okay? So step one, make sure you go ahead and w walk close to him and make him swing. Because otherwise, if you try and run around him, you need to shoot his back. So you need to make him swing. Once he's then swung, then move around him and shoot the back of him, okay? Ooh, there's Excalibur. Um, shoot the back of him. Pop the um what's it called the call and vent or whatever it's called make it change color apparently it changes from blue to orange when it's orange stand away from him okay don't because if you stand next to him he's going to keep doing this swing mechanic when he does this one that's not the mechanic that you want him to do. you want him to do the overhead one he'll do the overhead one when you're at range okay so step one make him swing like this shoot him in the back when that popped and you see the vent come out and the the pipe does like all of this flailing because uh, it's popped uh he you then want him to overhead swing when he overhead swings he can't vent himself which means he'll freeze up right when he freezes up go behind him and just go ahead and keep shooting i mostly always just keep shooting his back go behind him keep shooting him off you go and then from there onwards, do that four times until he's basically vulnerable. And then from there onwards, he basically overheats. He has no way to cool himself down. And then from there, you just kill him. If you want Excalibur, keep doing this. You can get chassis, neuro optics uh, systems. You need those three. Remember, we went over this before. Chassis, neuro optics systems. Once you've got all three of those pieces, I don't care. Once you've got all three of those pieces, go to the market and type in Excalibur. Okay, and then what we're going to look for, oh my god, what we're going to look for is Scalibur here, and we're going to purchase the blueprint. Now, as you can see there, we need the chassis, we need the neuro optics, we need the systems. You know exactly where those are. I just showed you how to go and do it. If you are looking for Excalibur, if you picked Mag or if you picked Volt and you want an Excalibur, this is how you farm for him. All right, that is what you go ahead and do. Once you've got all of that, go down towards your uh, foundry and go ahead and get crafting in here. Is there anything in here that I craft, by the way? No, I didn't craft anything. There is a fraggle. Mm, probably not too bad. Oh, wait, I can... Oh, wait, I've got a Titan Extractor. Wait, do I actually have it? Oh, I've got to unlock all nodes first. Okay, I do actually have an Extractor now, which is great. Um, At one point, I'm going to have to go ahead and unlock all nodes. I don't know. Maybe I might just do it on Mercury because it'll be the quickest one for me to go ahead and get done. I need one, two, three, four, five. There's no Arc Wings. There's no open worlds like Fortuna or Plains of Eidolon. So uh, I might go ahead and do this. And then what I can go and do is I can put an Extractor in there. And there's a chance for me to get things like Polymer Bundles, Morphics, Ferrite, so forth. We we briefly touched on Extractors. Uh, was it last episode or the first episode? But we briefly touched about them. So that's pretty cool. Anyways, chat, look at this. This is so cool. We have now done everything that was required for here. Look, I can see Fever Strike. Oh, yes, sir. Fever Strike is a toxin mod that goes on your melee. So it's a very, very good mod to go and get. But this is now accessible for us to go and do. I'm going to make sure I've still got my bow on me. And we're now going to go and enter into series oh my goodness exciting times series is what's considered the first of the tier two planets my builds generally might start falling off unless i can go ahead and get a toxin mods so not for melee but melee might be the better thing to go and run here there you go she's down so again, always nice and quick. If you're on Excalibur, run up, press your second ability, blinder, it will crowd control her, then use your fourth ability and just absolutely nuke her down, okay? If you're on Vault, I would recommend to go ahead and put your shield down, put your shield down like somewhere here, because if your shield runs out, you can just hide behind this. You see, you can hug this and break line of sight from the enemy. So put your shield down, keep shooting for your shield. You should be good. If not, use your second ability on Vault and you can go ahead and just melee her down if you wanted to. Um, if you're not on uh, Vault or if you're not on Excalibur with Mag, I'd recommend kind of somewhat the same thing. Just kind of sit up against something that you can break line of sight or hide behind. So something like this. And then press your 2 with Mag and then go ahead and shoot the bubble. Okay? That's how you want to continue to take on your junctions. Get in the habit of doing that. We haven't gone over Warframe modification yet. We've already touched on like basic modification for primaries uh, and mostly secondaries. Uh, and uh, melees also have their kind of same system if you will same system for melee so you guys should understand everything about like modification for primaries and secondaries well basics you'll understand we're not going to go into advanced not anytime soon right oh apparently i already have fever strike never mind i thought i needed it i might have got really lucky there 
Awesome. Look at that. Lovely. We got Swell and Tiger, which is a stance mod. We haven't really covered... Did we cover... We, I think we briefly uh, talked about stance mods, but... You know, for the sheer sake of it, there's no harm in me, like, recovering uh, topics, right? I'm sure you guys don't mind that. But um, stance mods, um, what are they? What do they do? Where can you use them? What are you using them for? The idea is that you can basically put a stance mods uh, inside uh, your melee weapons. Only melee weapons can get stance mods. Warframes can get something called aura mods. But if you look, it actually increases my capacity. So instead of it being 15-15, it's 16-16. But as you can see, if you look at the polarity... So remember, like, the little shape in the top right. Look at that shape. Does that shape match this shape? See the shape here? Right next to my mouse? Does that match that? The answer is no. So therefore, I get diminishing returns on it. I can still use it, and it still actually helps my build, but I get diminishing returns. Ideally, it would be better if I had a stance mods. Me too. <laughs> Hold on. Why was Fury in stance mods? <laughs> what? So, Fury's not a stance mod. That threw me off so fast. I was like, why am I looking at Fury in stance mods? Uh, no, stance mods will tell you that they're stance mods. You'll always notice as well, if you look at the top of the mod, see like this little section here? If you look at the top of mod, look there. That's how you can see it's a stance mod as well. And you can always go and click on here for stances and you can put it in. But that's what stance mods do, all right? Just so that you guys can have a better understanding of uh, stance mods. This will give me gas on the on the on the weapon. Sure, why not? Like we'll take. Oh no, wait! I, I can actually get viral on it. Might as well just take the viral. So remember, I spoke about viral. I spoke about status chance. I've spoken about these things. This was all in episode two. So I'm gonna try and refer back on previous episodes as much as I can. So we have unlocked series. Fantastic. What do we now need to do in series to get further? Jupiter requires us to complete Arcwing. It requires us to complete. A kill four and lieutenant krill um so we actually know how to do both those bosses if you want to uh, juggle your memory vor was actually the boss over here um wait did we ever do four i can't remember anyways vor is the boss over here you have kind of fought four before i believe four before vor before uh, i believe inside your like uh, intro quest if you will so you've already fought four and you fought lieutenant krill over here now you actually have to fight both of them um in extra this one here so you will actually have to fight both of them together then i need to survive for 10 minutes or more at draco this is going to be great what do i get in there i get rub oh i get rubido and carton edge so that rubido lin barrel is damaged for arcwing uh guns which is going to be important i get the amphis not too important but great stat stick value we won't, i'm not explaining stat sticks right now don't worry about it and we get some credits as well. So um, we want to try and progress through this. However, you'll start to notice enemies are starting to go up in levels here. They're level 12 to 14, as opposed to what they were down here. Shit, forgive me. As opposed to what they were down here, uh, level one to three. What does that actually mean? Because I know I've had this question before, but I can't quite remember how people have paraphrased this question. Does this mean I need to be level 12 to 14? No, it just means that enemies are going to start level 12 to 14, right? And exterminate, exterminate is not an endless mission, which means they'll be around 12 to 14, and that's mostly about it. However, if I went to a survival mission or like a defense mission, see like here on Spear, they start level 8 to 13, but as they continue to stay in the mission, they scale higher and higher and higher and higher. This has nothing to do with your marshy rank. This has nothing to do with the level of your Warframe. This is to do with what level they start. Okay, so how do I know as... I think this is normally a question. How do I know when things are going to get hard for me? You tend to just feel it getting hard. That's horrendous sentence. Uh, you'll tend to just keep playing, all right? Is what I'm trying to go and say. Keep playing. You'll, you'll start to slowly figure it out until you meet that wall don't assume that this is going to be too hard for you. Just play. Okay, so we're going to queue this up and we're going to keep going, all right? So I need to get to Draco as well, and I need to go and do some survival, which in my opinion is fantastic. If there's anybody inside the live chat right now that has any questions, um, hold on to them at the moment, but get ready to ask some questions about anything new player uh, or new player related. Um, because... Um, 
when I get into the survival, I'm going to need something to talk about. So if there's anything that you guys would like to know, hold on to the questions right now. And, uh, oh my God. hold on to the questions right now. Cause, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna go over them in a minute. But you're gonna meet, you're gonna meet these new kind of enemies, by the way, these like foremans, they're kind of just basically workers right now. And you'll also meet, I can't remember what the name of them are called, but you'll also meet some other newer enemies. They're only series bounds. So we're on series, which means there is a chance to go ahead and get there is a chance to go ahead and get new um resources. I didn't actually check what resources I get on this planet. But since we're doing exterminate, which is nice because I actually need to go and train weapons right now, so I gotta train up this Braddon as much as I can. Ideally, I think I should train up the Lex more, because I'm gonna use the Lex more than I'm gonna use the Braddon. Because I wanna use my Paris over the Braddon. Oh, I got an Oricon cell, which is fantastic. There we go. Oh, so I got a resource here and it's called Carbides. Right. Carbides as a resource, guys, is actually used for something that you will unlock a bit later called Railjack. You will need quite a fair bit of Carbides, okay? You can get some of... Oh. My muscle memory just kicked. Did you see how quick my muscle memory kicked in then? God, I hunted these for hours. I'm going to explain what this is in a second. Okay, don't worry. But um, carbides are going to be something that you'll need for Railjack a bit later down the line. You can only get carbides mostly from Ceres, but you can also get them from Railjack. But you will want quite a few of these. So, what is this? This thing right here. This is a Curia. Now, these are kind of like hidden collectibles in very, very awkward spots, okay, um, throughout your time within Warframe. They appear in set locations, which means if the tile set isn't correct and I just don't get, a, like, imagine me coming and see how this is like a door here. This could have been something completely different. When I opened this door, this could have been like an open area, right? But it just so happened to be this area here. So remember this because this is always here there's a curia you can simply scan it when i say there is a lot of curias in the game there is a lot of curias in the game what is the main purpose for doing them you will basically go ahead and a get law if you care about law but again you could just go ahead and google the law if you wanted to but b you see that statue you'll basically get that statue it's kind of like a flex if you will so if you like go ahead and collecting things go ahead and go for curious there's actually a really good document i'm going to bring this up on screen right now there's a really good document that i would actually advise you to go ahead and look towards um sorry two seconds i do have it i think i have it this don't know how I'm going to go ahead. And, I might have to remind myself to link this inside the thing. If not, you're going to have to kind of just type this in right now, which is going to be a long, long thing for you guys to type in. Uh, remind me, if I don't tie this towards the timestamps, if I don't put this in in the timestamps somewhere, um, can you remind me and I'll add it in? Okay, so if there's someone who's interested in this, this will tell you what curious are, where they are, where to get them, what, why you're getting them every single location it will show you exactly where they are it is an entire curia guide that breaks down everything about curious the locations of them and where to get them as you can see there is a lot nine threes uh, 11 tile sets 12s 14s all the way down to 14 four there's a lot of curious okay remind me um and i will go ahead and tie it into the timestamps okay um if not feel free to go ahead and just type it in if i forget <laughs> I'm going to lose energy here. God damn it. Oh God, pardon me. Don't knock me.
If you have a punch through on your weapon, those guys with the shields, you can actually penetrate their shields. So if you're like, oh god, do I have to just shoot their feet or do I have to wait for them to lower their shields? No. If you have punch through as a mod, put punch through. Even if it's just like 0.4, if it's really, really, really low point punch through, even put punch through on your mods, um, on your weapon, and you can still go ahead and penetrate their shields, okay? In case you don't want to have to like time it or shoot their feet or whatever. You basically need something called punch through, which is basically something called penetration. I've been needing to sneeze for like the last half hour. I'm still waiting for it to happen. <laughs> Nothing worse than the sneeze that is like not going to happen. There's circuits there as well, which is good. So we're getting circuits from uh, Ceres. We're needing quite a few of those. Oh, the door's locked. That's why. How are you? How's your day going? I hope you're having a good time. God, I can't wait. Can't wait to get corrosive. I basically am looking for the toxin mod. I could spend time maybe looking to go farm it. Because it's a great investment to go ahead and get it done. Um... There we go. But otherwise, uh, otherwise we're just trying to push through. I'm pretty sure there's a curia somewhere in this area. I'm letting my muscle memory kick in. There we go. Oh my goodness. I'm letting my muscle memory kick in. I kid you not. I didn't know where it was. I just knew it was. Oh, that's an amber star. So we haven't got one of these yet on uh, on screen. So this is an amber star. So there's cyan stars and amber stars. And again, these are going to yield you a lot of endo in the long run. So uh, always pick those up whenever you can. All right. The orange ones are amber. Go figure. Uh, and the uh, blue ones are cy uh, cyan. Actually, sorry. I think I don't even know if cyan is blue. I think that might actually just be I don't know why I'm teaching you guys colors. That's probably the wrong thing for me to teach. You get the idea. Amber, Amber, Cyan, Cyan. Like, <laughs> oh, these guys. Uh, but I can't quite remember what their name is. But it's not actually those ones. They're like them, but it's not quite them. Oh, I actually need to be careful with these Eximus units. Look at the damage that that heat did. You're going to be looking for those guardsmen that you see on my screen there. Um, but they've got a different name to them. They're like protectors of the series. Something tells me there's another curio around here, but I can't quite remember. I'm honestly just letting my memory take over. <laughs> like In series, there's a lot of curios. There's a lot of them. Yeah, remember like the look of these guys, because you're gonna need to kill something. Actually, did they I don't know if they ever took it off the junction to-do lists. Oh, can't go through that. Never mind. Can't wait to get some more damage done. This will be fantastic, by the way. I think after episode four, I might have to just take a bit of time to farm some stuff. I might do... Let me know if this is something that you guys would like or dislike. Um, I might do... Not so much... I might basically do like one episode kind of on my Twitch stream. Um, but it's not an episode that will be recorded live for YouTube. Um, it will be an episode that I'm basically um, just farming some stuff out that I need. 
So I'm not too sure if that is something that interests you guys. Um, so you basically, if, you, if you're if not following my Twitch, you, you won't see it. And my Twitch VOD won't save it forever, okay? Um, but basically, I can I can farm for like Intensify. I can farm for Serration. I can farm for particular mods that I know I'm going to need. Um, or I can just do some training. Because I'd rather not do them through these episodes. I'd rather these episodes be focused on actual progression. I can show you what I would do to grind. But I don't want to spend all of this time just grinding right here. Do you know what I mean? I feel like this is not stuff that you would really care about. Let me know if that's something that interests you. I'd be, uh, I'd be curious. Because uh, it would be really good. It would, it would pay off because anything that I can kind of... I could just do like a eight hour stream on Twitch on this account. Um, which would also be nice because I could probably like advertise the series as well. There's a lot of enemies here. I'm just going to do this. Probably should have just done that to be honest. Well, we're 93 out of 102, so we're almost done. If I had the bow, this would go a lot quicker. But since I'm kind of training the weapon right now, um, this is going to go a lot slower. Again, this is why I should train weapons not in these kind of missions. I should only really be looking to train weapons in like survivals, defenses, stuff like that. Um, because it would be better. These missions, I'm just looking to do exterminates and move on. Um, and as you can see, this Braddon's starting to fall off in damage now. Because the enemies are starting to get a little bit stronger. And this is where modding comes in. Hence why, again, last episode, I covered modding for you guys. So if you're if you're like me right now and you're starting to struggle do damage, episode 2 is a very important episode. Towards the end of episode 2, I go over modding. And I promise you, your builds will naturally get way stronger if you just go ahead and follow my advice. I think I'll just leave here. There's a carrier somewhere here. I can't remember where here. There is one. I know. I know there's one. It's it's inside this tile, but I don't remember where inside this tile set. Is it down there? It might be down there. There's also a courier here. <laughs> so I shot the barrel there just to try and give myself like a bit of extra uh, damage. This guy, by the way, can take your weapons. I've never really showed it on uh, on uh, footage, but if you all of a sudden lose your gun and you're like, wait, where's my gun gone? Um, he might have took your gun off you. So just keep, there's a courier. So there's that one. Um, but he might have took your gun off you is what might have happened. So just look on the grounds and you might have, oh wow, I got a cyan and an amber in this. This is really good. So I'm just looting a couple of containers and chilling out. I'm fairly certain there is a courier inside this area. I just... My brain's not with it. I don't know where it is. I'm pretty certain there's one there. <laughs> uh, yeah, so just to echo on like what I was saying with the... I would, I would literally just go farm things, but don't worry. Anything that I would go ahead and farm on the next video, I would explain what I farmed, why I farmed it, and what I did with it. So don't worry. Anything that I do off... The, off this series, anything I do off it, I will 100% tell you what I did. I'll write it down. Like, I'll make sure I don't 
I don't skip a beat, all right? So I'll tell you exactly what I did and why I did it. Don't worry. You guys will still be able to follow me. I wouldn't dare just leave you guys behind like that. That would uh, that would royally suck. Okay, so we got that done, which is great. We're actually not too far off ranking up one of the syndicates now, which is fantastic. So we want to go towards Draco. Um, this is Interception. Now, have we done an Interception yet? Something tells me we haven't just yet. Interception can be quite tough. It can genuinely be quite tough. I'm going to need the bow for this. Um. I'm a, a, this is actually the only one thing that I'm a little bit more worried about is, is interception. Operator, are you enjoying the view? Uh, I don't want to take that on that. Operator, you have well. I do have viral now, which is kind of in. Oh no, I don't have viral now. I have magnetic now, so these will combine into magnetic. Uh, I need grenier for now. God damn it! This is going to be tough. This is going to be very, very tough. So this is where I'm actually starting to just double check my builds because uh, from here onwards, it is generally going to get quite tough. Get rid of that. Some of these mods I can slowly get rid of. How's my Excalibur looking? Oh, so I can get way more things on my Excalibur now. We can get streamlines in here. We can get intensifies in here. It's not a lot. It's really not a lot, but I'm going to take it. I actually really want the Feast Wit in, Feast Wit in here. This is actually kind of important. Um, And I was running the enemy sense. But I don't think it actually popped up earlier, which kind of sucks. Uh, I'll put the redirection in for now. So it's a bit of a mess, and it's going to be a mess, but don't worry, because I haven't covered Warframe Modern just yet. Um, ranking up Vitality is not a bad idea. I'll only rank it up when I start to feel that I'm generally dying. Right now, I need other mods. So my biggest issue is having mods currently that, what I need currently available. That's my issue at the moment. Oh, this is very cool. I can get heat and I can get viral and heat on this, which is really, really nice. Uh, I'm also gonna go and put the status chance in it. I know it's not much, but again, I'm only working with what I can work with. Always keep that in mind, okay? How much endo do I currently have? I have 250. How's my duplicates going? So I've got a couple of these that I can go and get rid of. Spare one of those, spare one of these, spare one of these. So remember, I think I, I went over this, I believe, in the last episode as well. I'm fairly confident I did. So if I've got duplicates here, I can go ahead and just throw them uh, away. What I'm also going to go and do here as well is I'm going to check. So you see there's like cracked mods. I'm actually going to go check to see if I've got, see how like I've got a cracked mod here. I've got cracked, a non-cracked mod there. I'm now going to get rid of this. Hold the cracked mods until you can get the better replacement. So I can get rid of this. Get rid of that. Get rid of this. And get rid of this. So again, I'm gonna convert that into endo because I'm gonna need some here. So that's great. Do I have any, I don't have any items and treasures just yet because I don't think I've done Maru yet, have I? Do we have the Maru quest available? Stolen Dreams? Is that Maru? That's Maru. That could be honestly really good doing. I do have to do two. I might... Should I just go and do two quests right now? I can go do Arcwing. I need to get to Draco anyways, and I need to get towards this. I think I'm going to go and do two quests right now, guys. And I'm going to show you, because I feel like getting Maru on on episode three right now is actually kind of important. Maru, for you guys who, who don't quite know, is still something I do almost 7,000 hours in the game, Maru is still something that I do. So to give you an idea, this is still kind of important. Uh, you could do it once a week and it will give you basically some endo. So I think I should actually go ahead and do this. So I'm going to go and do two quests right now. I'm going to go and do the Arkwing quest, but I'm also going to go and do Maru's quest. And I'm going to do Maru's quest for educational purposes right now, okay? So we're going to go ahead and get this done. 
So Maru um, is going to be a trader that we are slowly going to go ahead and unlock. Okay. Would the dex weapons be cheating in this type of account? Yeah, what up, Fro? Um, no, it wouldn't. No. Um, I would actually, actually, thank you for telling me about that. Can you remind me when I get this quest done to explain like dex weapons and the things that are available? It's like if Barrow here. There's there's no cheating or anything else like that. I need to inform you guys as much as I can about what is what and where to go ahead and get it. So if you can just remind me, um, yes, I think it would be great. I don't know why I'm doing this. I literally just, I need to go ahead and just do the quest. Again, I'm on my bow right now. So do you know what would be good on my bow? I do actually have magnetic unlocked. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and run magnetic on my bow and I would do bonus damage against shields. I don't know if you saw that, but I stunned her. You see how she was trying to get away? I used my second ability. I stunned her in this area and then I just kept swinging until I, saw, until I could see that I hit her. So we've captured Maru. Yeah, so Maru is going to be a trader that you can only meet in Mars. Uh, and the Mars relay, she will open up her own kind of relay. So this will be the second or third relay I think you get access to. Is there a relay on Phobos? There is, right? Sorry, I seem to have forgotten. But either way, we're going to get access to a Maru re to a Maru relay, and she's all going to be about Endo. So if you need Endo, this is very important. Damn, that was pretty quick. One minute, 20 seconds. Shaved off just three seconds, and I got that done. So our Steel Meridian's almost 5,000 as well, which means we can go ahead and rank up the Steel Meridian this episode, which will be great, honestly. So many good things right now. Hello, I've returned to Warframe thanks to the series you started. No way, really? That's awesome. Thank you for letting me know. Will you explain Steel Path down the line and how to prepare or good setups to it? I can do that, yes. Um, I promise you, I, and I mean this, I promise you guys, at any point that I'm ready to walk away from this series, I will give you everything that I do, an insight to my mind, and I'll give you directions on what I think you should be doing. You will have, and I kid you not, I will leave you, I'm not joking when I say this, thousands of hours worth of things to do. Thousands of hours, not hundreds, thousands of hours. That's when I'm ready to walk away from this series and say, sorry, guys, I don't have the time or there's not as much interest or whatever. I'm just going to say I'm going to hang my hat up and say, all right, I think I've done a good job. Here's what I want you guys going to do. I'm going to give you a direction. I'm going to explain what this is. I'm going to explain what that is and so forth. What you might go and see, if you haven't yet seen it, you'll see me on my main account and I'll be showing you like what I would do. So I would mix between this account and my main account and I'll basically show you how to kind of get there and what it looks like and what I would take and why I would do it. So I will end up leaving you guys with a whole bunch of objectives and tasks, okay? Will I revisit this series when new updates come out? No. No. The only reason why I'm doing this series now is because the very paradox happens and there's a lot of new players joining. Um, just on the off chance that one of them happened to find my channel, I hope I can help them, you know? Um, plus, I've, I've never really done a new player kind of breakdown. A lot of streamers have done it, and a lot of content creators have done it, so I thought it would be my time to go ahead and do it. I feel like I have a good amount of knowledge in the game to go ahead and pass this on. And God forbid, the day that I ever... Whoops. The day that I ever go ahead and walk away from um, Warframe, at least I can leave my knowledge behind, right? So it'd be a shame to have like this many hours, almost at least as of right now, almost 7,000 hours in the game. It would be a shame to just throw that away and not pass on anything, right? I'm sure there's people who enjoy Warframe, but they don't quite understand what's going on and they wouldn't mind a bit of explanation and help. So for those people, I might as well pass my knowledge on, you know? It's kind of like what other content creators kind of did for me when I first started. Like, I wouldn't really consider myself an OG of Warframe content creators. I, I barely consider myself a veteran of the OG, or veteran of content creators, but you know, I've been around for a while and I feel like it would be still nice that I pass any kind of information on to help people. So I'm messing this up a lot right now. 
It's because I'm too busy just yapping. Take this a bit slower. If, you, if you're playing alongside me right now, take this a bit slower. I'm just kind of talking too much. But you can see, like, even when I'm brute forcing it, that you, you can technically go quicker. When you know what you're doing, you don't panic that much. No, I can't guarantee that just because a new update comes out, I'm going to go ahead and do the new update on this series. I don't even know where the series is going to finish off. I only had plans to do five episodes. That's it. And we're currently on episode three. So, I mean, guys, if you do like it, please like the video, share it around. If there's somebody out there that you know benefits from it, if there's a forum that you think could use it, if there's a place where it's allowed to be advertised, help me. Because <laughs> the more interest that this gets, then the more that, you know, I can commit time. Oh, look, there you go. This is what I was trying to show you guys earlier about where these... Oh, no, you don't actually take this vent. There it is. I was trying to show you guys this earlier, and I felt like I was being gaslit, but here you go. If you happen to be watching all of this episode so far, do you see what I mean? Like, <laughs> this is what I was trying to show you. <laughs> it just didn't happen earlier, and I was, I was dumbfounded. I was like, where is this? These are the vents that I was talking about. There's like vents on the sides. Do you remember this? Look. There's like vents on the side. And I was like, huh, I'm confused. Why do I not see this? But yeah. Drop the sub on Twitch. Oh, thank you so much for subscribing. That's very kind of you. You can also sub just, I'm not saying that you have to, but you can also go and subscribe here on YouTube um, because I do also have a subscription service available on YouTube. Um, it can just help me for whenever I spend time doing stuff like this or I do um, videos. Um, so there'll be like a little join button. It's, it's like five pounds. Please, I, I don't have anything to give you guys for it, um, but it's just a thank you. So if you do enjoy it all, um, it's almost just like a thank you thing. Yeah, it's like a membership thing that you guys can basically get. You'll get a badge next to your name, stuff like that. If you comment on my videos, you'll have badges and stuff. Um, I don't have anything to give you to say thank you. I just want to personally say thank you um for supporting um for supporting the channel um yeah I, d I mean i've been doing warframe for six years and as you can see i've only been a bit more active on youtube in like the last year so you know um it's um is what it is so i'm kind of getting a bit distracted right now forgive me this isn't really a live stream this is more for educational purposes um so let's keep going so we just did the codex right now we're going to do one more thing here i think this is the last thing that we need to go and do and then we also go ahead and get this done also to the people who did su did subscribe and turn a member in today's live stream thank you guys very much thank you i love what i do and i love being able to share any kind of knowledge and stuff onto other people so and i love being able to receive knowledge back as well you know I don't know everything in this game. I don't know anyone who knows everything in this game. It's practically impossible to know everything in this game. There's just too much. But um, thank you guys for supporting the channel. Right. So again, we're just blitzing through these missions right now. I don't think I actually have to hack this one because there is no... Normally there's a laser here. If there's a laser there, I think you have to hack that. If there's no laser there, I don't think you have to hack it. Can I get through this without being detected? Last time I tried... I don't even remember. Last time I tried to go and do that. And I couldn't... Ah, oh, is this the laser? Oh, no, it's underneath. That's not the one I was looking for. But you know what? I'm going to do this, but I'll show you where this laser is. That's not the laser I was, I was thinking about. I think I'm dead here. That electric prop might kill me. But if you see like... Oh my god, everything's hitting me now. If I came through here, you can also go down on the left here. See this? This is where the other one is. So you go down here. And I think that's that laser. The one above me. It should be this code for that one. But yeah, normally you turn off a laser. Oh my god, can you guys chill? <laughs> I'm trying to show people, but normally you can go and hack that laser as well. So just take your time there. Sorry that I couldn't quite show that properly because I got caught. Again, if you have a stealth frame, um, a stealth frame is going to do this a lot more relaxing. So try to get yourself a stealth frame, okay? Loki, Ash, uh, Ivara, these are probably the better frames for you to learn spy missions with. And you can take your absolute time because enemies aren't going to be able to see you. You can go, you can cloak yourself and go invisible. I don't know why I hit that, because, like, I have no energy to conserve, so... Oh, do you see that out the corner of my eye? Saw the fragment. So 
So we're just going to go and get that scanned as well. So you see the shield here? Like, if he puts up, I've got punch through. So you see how I can shoot them? If you was watching from earlier, I was talking about how punch through and weapons can make you shoot through the shields. So I'm just going to do that. Enemies are starting to hit just a little bit harder. I do want to be a bit more cautious. Oh, I can show you this route. There's a few different routes that you can take here. Um, you can even go straight up. I'm going to show you the route that I go and take. So you can either go all the way this way um, and go to the left, or you can go straight up here and then go underneath this beam. And I think there's a beam to hop. Is there a beam to hop here? No. And you can fall down here. Um, I can't remember which route I take. Do I go this way? I don't think I do, right? No, I then normally go this way. Oh, I can't actually remember the route that I take now. It's been so long since I've done this by. But anyways, you can come down here and you can basically go ahead and... Oh my god. Sheesh! He's insane! That was just really lucky. And then you can come in here. I think there's a vent somewhere. Here it is. So where was this? Can I go up, please? Oh, that's what I came out. Oh, it's literally here. Oh my god. I'm an idiot. That's where it is. I dropped down here and I'm supposed to just drop down there. Whoops. Oh, I remembered it now. So I didn't need to go out there and hack the door. I was kind of trolling. But yes, that's the route to go ahead and get in here. <laughs> I couldn't remember the route. It'd been so long. Forgive me. So yeah, that's a quicker route of doing it. But yeah, there's a few different routes for spies. Like how I've always said, whenever you do a spy mission, take your time doing them because you'll be surprised how many different um, routes you can take. There's lots of different routes. It's really cool. Maybe Wukong brute forcing isn't the option. Well, yeah, maybe I should go and recommend Wukong for uh, spies as well and rescues. Um, he can also be very good to go ahead and take. Um... I keep forgetting about taking Wukong there. I'm sure someone wants me to recommend Nova as well, but I'm not going to recommend Nova. It's the one with the Jackal, right? Remember, if I trigger this one, you can get the Jackal there and you can scan it and kill it and you can get a Jackal sigil. Sorry, I call it a Jackal. It's a Lynx, but I apologize. I just keep calling them Jackals. But yeah, it's a Lynx. It's a Lynx sigil that you can get. I'm pretty certain I've gone like past three different curious, but I'm not going to bother with them, okay? Just in the back of my head, my head's going, this room's got a curia. This room's got a curia. Oh no, wait, there's a curia there. There could be a curia here. Like, <laughs> my head's ticking right now. It's just ticking, but... Don't worry about all of those curious. Again, there's a lovely guide that you can go and go to. And again, hopefully I've added it to the timestamps. Right. This should now be, hopefully. Is this Maru done? No, I've got to go and take the arcane codices. I'm just doing missions and switching off right now. But this will go ahead and hopefully unlock Maru. I know we've been talking about a few different things right now. Oh my god, it's another vote. Okay, so this is all just like spy missions. Well, this is good because it can teach you spy missions. Um, so this isn't too bad. I'll be excited to get to Jupiter, by the way, and show people secret doors in Jupiter. But unfortunately, we won't be able to open them until we kind of you know what. You know? I'm sure there's a new player right now going, wait, what does he mean by that? Exactly. Until you know what. Although the theory's kind of changed that perspective, I guess you could go and say, but yeah, it is what it is. There you go, and that's that one done. This is the one that I was thinking of earlier as well. Move. This is the one that I was thinking of earlier as well. one of the previous missions you saw that i was looking for like these kind of vents oh look you see my attacks are different well a little bit different now it's because i got a stance mod in so i've got i've actually got combos to do now which is kind of nice uh whoops um but yeah when you enter this area you basically either go left and then you can go down underneath there 
or if you can go right yeah uh you go up over here then you come out into this area and then what i would recommend is that i would cross over so i'd jump over literally all of this and then i would try to go back into this area so this is where we just were and see and i would try and go in there ideally you want to try and access underneath it um if that doesn't work could you get a vent here you can also get the vent here so just do the same thing but in reverse so you see you could end up going in here otherwise what you will end up doing is that you come out into this area and then there'll be there'll be lasers here there'll be this that there you've then got to go and take this out you got to kill those enemies you got to drop these lasers you got to hack this door you got to go in it's way too much to go and do way too much oh what's that um so yeah, try and use these vents because it will just get this done a lot quicker. Do you guys think I'm going at like a good pace? Do you think I should go like slower or do you guys think I should go quicker over things? Do you feel like I'm going at a good pace for like a new player? I'm trying to get some feedback. I know that's going to be subjective. People are going to find some paces better or faster or slower some people probably want me to go way quicker my advice to you whenever i hack like corpus things normally do the middle hack last if you need to Try and look at what everything else lines up and then the middle one you can just basically keep spinning because you don't have to worry about where it is so i normally go ahead and leave the middle one to last when there starts to be like as you go up more and more in difficulty there'll be more and more things to hack in there so they get a little bit tougher okay can i get through please move thank you uh, and as they get a little bit tougher um that's when i start to recommend leave the last hack leave the middle one to last can't wait for the corrupted mod grinds oh, that'd be kind of cool i don't actually know which warframe i'm going to go ahead and use to grind that i maybe i want to try and see if i can explain dojos in this episode as well i feel like getting dojos in early oh by the way when you take this elevator just turn straight around and you want this pop this pop this and it will keep you up nice and high and then from there just jump all the way up to the top okay or just fall down because you're an idiot like me what is going on hello bullet jump reset remember you can reset your bullet jump but mine just didn't do that i normally just literally say jesus take the wheel and i just drop all the way down there i don't care about because i know i can hack this quick enough that that purge is going to do nothing for me so i just say jesus take the wheel and just hit every laser on the way down oh ain't no way He's got it on video. He's got it on video. Please leave me alone for a second because I want to show this. So this right here is our first sculpture. You will see lots of different types of these around, but here's a timestamp for you. If you can see this, get it. Don't leave these. These are literally endo, okay? So if you need endo, this is your way to get them. Sheesh. Really, really good that I got that and I got that on video. Oh, that makes me so happy. Because it's just RNG whether or not you get one. If you spend your time searching tile sets, you can find them a bit more often. But if you're kind of just running through tile sets like I am, um, you might not find them as often. So take your time. But those are going to be sculptures. And funnily enough, wait, isn't that kind of... We're literally doing the sculpture. Technically, we're doing the sculpture quest right now. So it's kind of poetic justice that um, we also get a sculpture. Our first sculpture on the Maru quest. Oh, the dex weapons. Wait for me to finish the quest and I'll go over the dex weapons. I need to finish the quest first. But yes, so these are going to be important because we're looking for these to go ahead and turn into this lady right now called Maru. Okay, so we're trying to finish off this quest right now, but we also got that. So oh, I'm so happy that we got that. That's awesome. That's genuinely so, so good. find the arcane oh my god there's so many of these okay well we just keep going you say it's a good pace yeah 
People can always pause and rewind. Yeah, okay. Okay, you think I'm going at a good pace, that's good then. Oh, the infested are here. Okay, cool. So this looks like this is the last bit of the Maru quest. So we're just getting this part done now. Is that Kuva? No, I thought that was Kuva for a second. Oh, are we doing keys? No idea, but we've gone from the Oricon into the voids. That'll be kind of entertaining to explain. Um, I'll do, I'll try and explain that a bit later. Oh, is this? It's not Chroma. The full set of codices, upload them, and say hello to treasure. Is this Chroma? Why do I feel like it's Chroma? Oh, I don't like that. I didn't. I didn't remember that happening. Oh wow, I really don't like that, DE. Can we like loosen that a little bit? God. What just happened? I honestly don't know. Oh look, I've never looked up there before. Mostly because you don't see this tile set in other places. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. Look at this. I might just kill myself. No, I didn't. I've never actually, because you don't. Sorry, I should not be doing this right now. You guys ever like explored this part? Because you don't really get this tile set anywhere else. That's so cool. If that door had opened, that would have been way worth my time. There's the, the only place that you get this tile set is during this mission. Oh, this is where it teaches you arcane boilers. It's not chroma. It's the arcane boiler. So this one basically throws like infested pods around it and it summons more and more uh, infested. This is kind of what this one is. Imagine it like a summoner. I do no damage. <laughs> I do no damage to it right now. Ah, darn, please. All right, there you go. Oh, do you know what I could do whilst I'm also doing this right now? I can tell you guys about this. Um, but yeah, anyways, that was cool. Just to look around. Um, this is nothing really to do with the new player series, but I just thought this was pretty cool. If, if you guys are new to Warframe as well, um, every Thursday, they go ahead and do something called Prime Time, which on twitch.tv forward slash Warframe. That's twitch.tv forward slash Warframe. Um, every Thursday, they go ahead and do something called Primetime. Um, they're actually going to showcase one of my videos on Primetime today, which is pretty cool. It's the uh, Daviri Paradox all new weapons, uh, all of the uh, the new melee weapons. They're actually going to go and show that off, which I think is pretty cool. So um, they asked me like, oh, can we go ahead and show this video? And I was like, yeah, sure, go for it. <laughs> I was supposed to say that on my Twitch stream, but... Um, Never mind, I'm just showing it to the people who are live here now. But I thought that was kind of cool. Because I had a few of my... I've had, like, my Discord shared on there and, like... Oh, again, for a lot of new players, if you're watching this series, feel free to join my Discord. Discord.gg forward slash no sympathy. I have a lot of information on my Discord. A lot. And I mean, like, a lot. <laughs> there is a lot of information. But, yeah. Yeah, prime time is tomorrow. Oh, my God, we got an Oricon Catalyst blueprint. Let's go. I guess that's because I've completed the quest at this point. And I got Aether Daggers as well. But that Oricon Catalyst, really, really good. I could put that on a weapon. Um, no weapons that I have right now that I would want to put that on, though. Um, if I can get myself either a Paris or a Paris Prime, I would probably consider it. But we've done it. Right. Stolen Dreams is complete. So what's actually going to happen here is we now want to go ahead and go over to Mars again. And you see this relay here? It's called Maru's Bazaar. We're going to click on this and we're going to go and join it. You join it like a normal relay. But Oh, wait, 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 wait. Now, before we go there, 
before we go there, what I want to go and show you is the Ayrton treasure that we had got. So we're going to go up here to Ayrton treasures and we got this sculpture. We got this during the quest. In case you skipped ahead on the VOD or anything like that, this is what we got. What we want to go and do is that we need to install things into it. And I have exactly what I need to install into it. See these? These are what you get from like loot in containers and chests and stuff like that. Um, these will basically be inserted into these now you will normally have an auto install kind of down here but i think for a while you have to insert them manually but after a while you can slowly pop them in but anyways what we're gonna go and do is we need an amber star so we got one here we're gonna click and click install okay that's gonna sock it in then we need a cyan star and we need another cyan star now this this is now 1800 endo 1,800 endo, and as you can see, it also moves. So you can do two things with this right now, okay? What's gonna happen is you can go to your equipment, orbiter, decorate, and then if you press, for me it's one, you can actually go and put it in your orbiter if you want to as a decoration. So it kind of moves, it looks really cool. Feel free to leave it there or put it wherever you want, okay? You can do that. Or, and I'm not gonna do this, so <laughs> give me it back right now. We can go and pick it back up, return it back to the inventory, and what we're going to go and do is we're now going to go to Mara's Bazaar. Right. This is important. Okay. So we're going to timestamp all of this stuff as well. Mara's Bazaar is something that I still do. God knows how many hours in the game. Mara's Bazaar is all about getting one free guaranteed sculpture every week. Okay. Every week on reset, which is currently Monday. So on midnight or whatever it is, Monday reset, whatever your time for Monday reset is. Um... What's going to happen is you're going to be able to go ahead and do a Ayatun Treasures, right? So you're going to be able to go and click this. We're going to click this. And then we're looking for Ayatun Treasures. I am ready. This is cool because I'm going to show you how to go and do one of these... Um, one of these... Um, spit it out, Clark. I'm going to show you how to do one of these puzzles. And this is going to be cool as well because I don't have my main account to do this. So I just blitz through these normally. I'm going to open this up. And let's just keep going. So we're currently in the Oricon tile set. You can take the elevator up if you want to, but if you can find quicker ways up, just go ahead and take it. You'll get better at parkour. If I ever go like really quick in missions, like I said, feel free to pause and catch up. Or if I'm going slow, then uh, you wait for me, okay? Like, <laughs> however quick you can go. Okay, so this is one of the uh, patterns. Pay attention, right? So we're gonna go and stand on this. It's gonna basically activate. You need to get past this door because it's gonna close. So get in this area. Now that you're in this area, you're gonna stand on this pads. Activate. There's going to be a few different ones, but if you get the one that I've got on screen right now, follow what I'm doing. If you don't get this one, don't worry. I will kind of try and do these every time I can. Next episode, I'll do it again, okay? We're going to stand on this with now times. You ready? All you're going to do is reach the ends, right? This one's the drop down, so just go ahead and switch in between all these lasers. Aim glide at the bottom, jump over these, go straight up in the air. When you get up to the top, look down and melee attack because it will launch you straight down. From there onwards, just literally roll, glide, and slide until you get into the door. This will take practice, okay? But that one part, when you get flung up into the air, look down and just melee, because otherwise you're just going to be floating in the air for no reason, all right? Now that you stand on this pads, you're in here, and we get an Ayrton sculpture. But not only do we get an Ayrton sculpture, sheesh! Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sheesh! There is a chance that I could get something that I really, really need. Let's see if I do. So let's pick up the Ayrton Sculpture. That is guaranteed. You could do this once every single week. Do it without fail. It will help you. Now. Didn't get it. When I stand on this pad, this is going to alert all of this. So what I'm going to go and do is do this. There's a mod there. There's another mod there. Oh, it's not telling me what it is. I'm excited. Please. I got ghosts. And. Oh, convulsion, baby. Okay, that's good. Come on, come on, come on. 
These mods are really... Oh, there's two mods. These mods are really important. Okay, I got Vitality. I got Point Blank for Shotgun. Let's go. And Slip Magazine. No. I got Point Blank for Shotgun. No, let's go. This is a really good way to farm mods that you actually need. You can get things like Intensify. You can get Flow. You can get like Serration. You can get so many good mods from this. So many. So if you ever go and do Void Tile Sets... You can go ahead and get these rooms in them. You won't always get the sculpture, but you can go ahead and get these caches. And whenever you see these caches, go for them. Um, they're really important. <laughs> Come on. Enhanced vitality. Come on. Lightning rods. Not quite what I need, but it's okay. I'm going to stand on this one. And then I'm going to go back on myself over here. Up here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Lightning rod. No! Oh, so close. I don't know if I actually get anything from the lockers. I, I, I'm in desperation mode. I'm clawing. I'm going to claw at the lockers. Nah, I didn't get anything. It's okay. But yes, this is... Whoops, I need to go to the other door. Um, these are really important to go ahead and do. Um, oh my goodness. All right. Oh my goodness. Void is so, so nice. You see these, like, lockers as well? I don't actually know if I can get them from lockers. I think I can. There's lockers above me as well. Don't forget about those. But I would take a minute or two. When it comes to Void, I would loot Voids. Up here. Come on. No. All right. This area is the Void area. You'll get, like, a lot of Corrupted. You see where it says Corrupted? If you see Corrupted enemies, you know you're in the Voids. Okay? Okay. Corrupted enemies basically just mean that they kind of mix all three factions in one. So you'll see Grenier, you'll see Corpus, and you'll see Infested. Uh, they kind of basically mix all of them. But yeah, this isn't a bad place. I might be able to get Argon Crystals. I just got it. I was just about to say I might be able to get an Argon Crystal for video. Why am I so excited about an Argon Crystal? I don't know. I love being able to show you guys this stuff. So I'm so glad I've got it. Right, I've got an Argon Crystal. We'll explain what that is right after this mission as well. Okay, don't worry. Otherwise, uh, we're good to go ahead and extract. But yes, this is... Oh, wait, hang on. So I'm going to show something here. See this? I'm going to break this. Come on. There you go. There's one there. Ammo jump. God damn it. <laughs> wait, can you break this other vent? No, you can. It's just that vent. Okay. Just, just trying to see if I can get a bit lucky. Wait, that looks like a loot room. No, it's not. I lied. These ones, not as much. Might be a room over here that I'm going to go and check. Uh, look underneath the stairs as well. Sometimes that can help you. No. And nothing there. Okay. Also, when you're leaving, sometimes check like here. And sometimes check here. Sculptures can spawn here. Not in this mission, but sculptures can spawn there. God damn, that's so good though. Okay, we got so much on the go here. So look how many new mods we just got access to and we got point blank. That's very important for when we get heck, okay? This is going to be a big mod for us to invest endo into. So we just got some more endo. We got the Ayrton Valana sculpture. Here's the thing. It's not the best one of the bunch, unfortunately. No, Orta. I believe it's called Orta. Orta is the best one of the bunch. But now what we can go and do is we're going to go back to Maru. So this means I've guaranteed my sculpture for this week. So I can't do this again until next week on reset. And what I'm going to go and do is talk to Maru. And I'm going to go and do something here called extract endo from Ayrton sculptures. When you have enough um, stars and so forth. So you need the cyan stars and the amber stars. Insert it into it. Once it's filled up, then sell it. Okay. So I will get 1,000... Whoops, there you go. I'll get 1,800. Look how much endo that is, by the way. This is great because I can actually pour this into something. We got some upgrades right now. We got some upgrades. I'm excited. But look, look how much this is only worth. 325. It's not worth a lot. But look, I could end up getting a, a an amber star. I need an amber star there. I need a cyan star there and another cyan. And if I can go and get all of that, that could be worth quite a fair bit of endo as well. Okay, so... 
Maru is going to be a, a quite a fair bit of Endo and stuff like that. All right. You can also search for clans here. So if I go and look for Ayatun uh, treasures, I'm out of leads. She can't go ahead and do it. Okay. So I can't do that. But I can extract things here. Uh, I'm looking to buy something. Um, I don't think that actually does anything. Uh, also, another person that is here, I believe she's over there. Um, let's go ahead and explain Vazia a little bit, but I'll try and explain Vazia as a trader. So Vazia is back here. Vazia is to do with um, exalted... Um, can you remember in episode two where I explained about um, relics that were vaulted? Can you remember that? Um, in episode two, I talked about relics and I said some relics are basically obtainable, but some relics are vaulted. If you don't remember, please go ahead and go back on episode two. And if you click on the relic section, it is timestamped. You'll hear me explain about vaulted relics inside the game. Vazia is a person, a trader, who basically brings vaulted relics and it rotates, I believe, once every three months, maybe once every four months. And she can basically bring some vault. She doesn't bring all of them. She just brings some vaulted relics. She's kind of like Barakatir, and I've spoke about Barakatir briefly, but I've never showed you guys Barakatir as an actual trader. Um, Barakatir turns up every fortnight, so that's every two weeks, so bi monthly. Um, is it bi monthly? Bi weekly, sorry. Um, but yeah, what we're going to go and do here is click on Browse Wares. Um, so as you can see here, she's got her own kind of currency, which is called Regal Aya, and she's also got something called Aya. Now, Aya, if I go ahead and sort by Aya, um, Aya is going to be able to get you relics, okay? So you're going to use Aya to go and get relics. Where do you get Aya from? Again, guys, if you remember Warframe Wikipedia, Drop Tables, it will show you where to get Aya from. You can get Aya from uh, capture missions in Hepit Void. If you don't know what it is, I'll say it one more time. Capture mission Void. It's called Hepit. H-E-P-I-T. There's a chance to get Aya there. Otherwise, you can get Aya from bounties. There's a few different places where you can go and get Aya, right? But once you get Aya, you can basically trade it in for this relic. And this relic holds things like Trinity Prime. It holds things like uh, Nova Prime. It holds things like um, Soma. You get the idea? So if you're looking for these kind of these kind of things on this rotation right now, this is where you would get it. There's limited time stuff as well. So Necros Prime and what's over here, uh, Silver and Aegis and so forth. So you can go ahead and get uh, all of that. All right. So limited time. Right? So yeah, there's even more things here. Tigress Prime as well. Fantastic. Uh, guns going to get there. Necros Prime is fantastic. It's going to get and some Oberon Prime stuff and so forth. So what about this other currency that you're seeing in here? So IR is free. You can get it in the game. Ima I know this is going to sound crazy. Imagine IR like credits. You might see where I'm going with this. Now this, imagine Regal IR like Platinum. However, you can't trade Regal IR with other players. So Regal IR is actually a different form of real life currency. Uh, the only way you're going to go and get it is if you want to go and buy things. All right. So as of right now, um, limited time. So you could go ahead and get this right now, Nova and Trinity, and you can get all of this stuff with it. Um, or you can get Oberon and Necros, or you can just go and get Oberon. Uh, the packs, this retires in one day, this retires in one day. So you see how it like rotates. Uh, you can purchase Regal Aya. I might as well put it on my screen because why not? Let's be transparent about it. How much does Regal Aya cost? So is it, how much is it just for Regal Aya? So if 10 Regal Aya, oh, that's how they get you. Oh no, that's, you get, oh no, six plus one bonus. So if you wanted to get 10, you'd have to buy 15 and that's going to cost you 52 pounds. I don't believe there's actually any kind of like, but you will also get 1,200 Platinum. So you also get some cheeky plat out of it. But yeah, it's going to be a little bit pricey. It's completely optional to go and do this though. Um, it's just going to help kind of speed up and grab particular things. And there's a lot of cosmetics that you can also get in here as well. So if you missed any previous cosmetics, they're also using this as a way to go and get cosmetics. But like I said, this weapon, you can get it from the relics and you can get the relics essentially for free if you want to. There are some other things that you can go and get down here. So you can get some, or you can get some ducats as well, which is pretty cool. So you can also go and trade that over with Barricadier. But yeah, just briefly touching on this. Um, she is a trader. She exists in Maru's uh, Bazaar as well. So you can just see her back here. So you see where Maru is over here. 
But yeah, I figured I'd go ahead and talk about her in case you guys want to go and take your own time to browse. But Vazia goes ahead and rotates her wares. I, sorry, I thought it was every three months. Apparently it's not. I don't know how often she rotates her wares anymore. When she was first introduced, I think it was every three months. So I might be wrong with that now. But um, yeah, you can go ahead and... Um, thingy. Sorry, I just saw a comment saying game with multiple BS currencies. Check. Right, I'm just going to do this because I think this is great for educational purposes right now that I can go and put someone in their spot. Um, Warframe doesn't have multiple BS currencies. Um, Regal IR might be the only currency that is a bit unfortunate. All of the other currencies in this game are completely fine. That includes Platinum. It has a self-sustaining economy. Actually, more games need to be like Warframe. I think you massively misunderstand how this game's broken down. That's not me defending Warframe because I'm a partner. That's not me defending it because of uh, you just you're misunderstood. Warframe's platinum system. More games need it. Periods. It's actually an insult that other games don't do it. Warframe's got one of the best best self-sustaining economies. Don't get it twisted. And new players, okay? Listen, just trust me on this one. All right. My goodness. Um, but Regal IR is is tough. Okay, it's just tough. Unfortunately. That one you do actually have to spend money on and that's just how it goes. Maybe they make it tradable down the line. I don't know. All right, but that's the only one that's kind of tough right now. Um, what were we talking about? Oh, somebody wants to go and talk about the dex weapons. So this is good and I should go ahead and explain this as well. And forgive me for not explaining it earlier. Um, so sometimes you might go and see events pop up and there's lots of different events that can go ahead and happen. You'll see things like ghoul purges, thermia fractures, so forth. You might see operations. You might hear something called Operation Plague Star. You might hear think Operation Scarlet Spear if it ever comes back. But right now the events that are going on is the 10 year anniversary of Warframe. And this stuff is actually worth doing. Okay, you can go ahead and get things like um, they're like particular challenges. So I can go ahead and get this Cyan Dana if I go ahead and use melee weapons only on this mission. This might be pretty good for me to go and get because I could look a little bit cooler. I might go ahead and get this potentially. Um, I don't really need a whisk skin right now, but um, I would recommend anytime events come up, if you've not done them before, please go do them. Um, you can go ahead and get things like dex weapons from them as well. Dex weapons can only be obtained once per year. Yeah. So, and they will give you Marshy ranking. There's a lot of things that can be tied to particular operations and particular events, which can be kind of tough. So if you are looking for those weapons, you're going to have to wait. Um, but yes, if you can go to do these, I would recommend doing them. Uh, I kind of want to go and do this, but I'm not going to do it right now. Uh, I might go do it when this episode's over. I might just go do it to myself just because i wouldn't mind the sign it's actually one of the best sign banners in the game my humble opinion this one's really really nice um when does this normally happen de celebrates their anniversary i think it's like every april or may um this one's going on really long right now so this is coming towards the end of may and it's still going on so we're almost in june and this thing's still here um but normally it's around april that they celebrate their anniversary but right now because it's 10 years of warframe it's 10 weeks of free gifts which is really cool okay but yes um if you play around april or may uh they, they tend to be celebrating i think it's april but yes um so where do we leave off so we just got the mara's bazaar stuff done right fantastic um, so now we're going to go and do the Arcwing, um, Arcwing um, quest there. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. Um, so let's go ahead and continue from where we left off. Begin. Okay, so Odinara uh, is your first kind of blueprint, which is great. Um, can I even build Odinara straight away? I have no idea. Let's have a little look. I could not. So I need the harness wings and systems. So I'm assuming I will just get those over time uh, right here. So I'm just going to click on that. So we're going to look into Arcwing. Yeah, yeah, we're at that stage now. Um, the grind has begun, all right? The grind's begun. But um, Arcwing is going to be something very interesting because I wouldn't be surprised if in the next year or two, they do actually look into Arcwing. I would not be surprised. So be careful when I say what I'm saying during this. I'll put a disclaimer. This could change because with all due respect, it needs to change. Okay, with all due respect. Oh, I can show you guys this, by the way, as well. You see here, and you see here, um, what you can go and do is if you stand on this pad here, it'll actually open up loot, and you kind of need to shoot it down. So 
take like a hit scan weapon the loot will actually drop down here and you can collect the loot here's the thing if i stand on the pad now it doesn't work you only get one opportunity to go ahead and do this so i would recommend if you can break loot with an ability or if you've got like a, a gun that does explosive damage like a, a rocket launcher of some kind a grenade launcher shoot at it or if you've got punch through oh wait hang on the bow might work oh no look, look, look. the bow i'm just guessing i don't know where it is one sec if i see damage numbers i'm doing this right <laughs> somewhere here where are they I'm going to go from a side plate here. There we go. You see the damage numbers? There you go. So I broke it. If you've got punch through or if you've got... Oh, look, I can still collect it as well, which is good. So if the loot drops and I've got vacuum or fetch as mods on my companion, I can also go and collect the loot. But you want to try and basically break those before opening them if you can. Um yeah the void whenever you're in this area this kind of like golden ish grayish kind of tile set um this is a really good area for you to just go and break caches and focus on uh loot and so forth like dropping down here turning the rounds going in here and then seeing all of this it's gonna be worth your time oh we got something called argon didn't we i didn't explain argon i couldn't explain argon can someone remind me to explain argon after this I've forgotten. You can get a resource from the void and it's called Argon and I need to explain it because it's a very different resource than like other resources in the game um, as to how it works. It's the only resource that actually decays. So it, it's kind of a resource that you have to spend it. Um, if you don't spend it, then again, like I said, it decays. This opens up, but you need to go all the way over here, stand on this and then come all the way back. Okay, this guy got in my way. Um, if you go now back on yourself, look, that door's now opened up. And if you get in here and stand on this pads, you stop it. And look, there goes some more treasure that we might be able to go and get some mods and stuff from. So you can always go ahead and do that as well. This thing here slows you whenever you go across it, in case you're wondering why I'm always bullet jumping over it. Um, but unfortunately, I didn't get this side because I didn't go quick enough because I was too busy showing. But this also opens up as well when you stand on that pads. So you also want to get in there. So these you just want to go and hack. You'll get used to doing this area as well. There's a lot of mobile defense that happens here. I'm going to use my Leto to train up now. Oh, look, there's the drone. You see the drone there? So I'm going to go and shoot the drone. Or not. Everything's just going to get in my way. But anyways, I'd go and shoot the drone and he can't summon the drone anymore. That's what I would go and do. Be careful, those turrets. They're a bit too tanky for me right now. So all we need to go and do is basically protect this, but uh, nothing really hits it, so don't worry. And once it does 50%, you see on the left hand screen, once 50% is done, we're going to do this one. So you can kind of take your time and have a little meander. And then boom, boom, and then boom. Stay focused. There's a heavy unit approaching. Get rid of the shields. Drone first as well. Always good to go and get rid of those guys. Then get rid of this Eximus. He's going to be a bit tougher. I'm going to try and get in his shields here. There you go, that's better. Ah, so, um, something else about Railjack. I know you're going to hear me say Railjack a few times, but we're not actually on Railjack content. Um, but I got something called Cubic Diodes as well. It's also another currency that you'll be needing a fair bit amount of. And you can get this on Europa. When you get to Europa, you need these things as well to go and help you start Railjack. So if you do get ahead of me and you're already like, oh, I'm doing Railjack now. Um, that's cool. You need cubic diodes and you're going to need, um, what was the other one called? I forgot it now. Carbides or something like that on Ceres. So you also need those as well. I can't remember what we're doing. Oh my goodness. I haven't done this fight in so long. I forgot all about this fight. Hang on. There we go. I completely forgot all about that fight. And now we put the key in here. 
Oh, we got the key now. Oh, yeah. Holy keys on me. We're going to put this in the terminal when we went through the portal. So we're just going to go back on ourselves as soon as we go through that portal. Oh, no, it's actually on this side. Whoops, never mind. So we just put it in there. Probably my bundles, so I was, I was going through it. So yeah, we're done with that now. Why do I still have time left right now? Isn't the portal actually done? Well, there's a little room here as well. If you just look up here. Ain't no way. Wait, did I ever actually show the secret ones? I don't think I did, did I? The hidden caches and so forth. Um, these caches are, um, as you can see, a lot bigger. And if I shut my mouth. Can you hear that? So these caches are also, um, so they're basically called rare caches in this case. They're also going to hold you some good loot. So you always want to go for them. They will always be marked on your mini map as like loot that you can pick up. And they will always go and display that sound. Um, but as you can see, they're naturally really big. You want to try and get these caches if you can. Like I said, you can get some good loot from them. So whenever you go and find an Oricon cache, just go get it. And yes, it's worth going out of your way to go ahead and, and grab them, to be honest. You know, so if you want to go ahead and just farm a couple, um, go do it. I encourage it. I need to remember Argon. Oh, I love this room. Does this break? Um, I just tried to use Operator. God damn it. Just trying to do something that we definitely don't have access to whatsoever. Uh, this room, in my opinion, is a really good loot room. I really like loot in this room. Um, getting this, opening that. Hopefully we don't die to these turrets. Oh my goodness, I'm stuck. These turrets can go ahead and hurt you, so just take your time. There's one down there. Oh, can you guys leave me alone for a second, please? Because I'm just trying to loot this room in peace. Thank you. So yeah, I, I really like, when I was new to the game, I would loot this room every single time. Every single time. I'd always be in here. Just constantly opening all of the lockers, shooting all of the caches. Um, always a good little room to go ahead and just get in. There's normally caches underneath the stairs. There's normally a cache there. There could be a cache here. So you can go ahead and just loot it all. Cache like here, so forth, cache there. Um, so yeah, if you ever get in this room, just go ahead and loot it. All right. And then I'm going to check here. There's no sculpture and there's no sculpture. But again, always go and keep your eyes out for a sculpture that could just be there right at the very end. <laughs> okay, okay, that's pretty cool. So we got a new, um, we got a stave stance, which is pretty awesome. And have we done, <gasps> still Meridian's ranked up. Right, we can also go ahead and focus on this. I know we're doing the Arcwing quest right now. Um, but also focusing on this is also good. So I know we're jumping between a lot of different things in this episode. Um, but again, I hope you guys are enjoying that. So what we're going to go and do now is we're actually going to go and rank up with Steel Meridian. Um, so we're going to click here and we're going to go ahead and click rank up. I need 30,000 credits and I need two Morphics. Thankfully, I've got both of those. So we click rank up. We're committing. We're now rank one with Steel Meridian. So what's going to happen? Why are we ranking up and why is it important? We'll be able to go ahead. None of, uh, to be honest, none of this stuff. I would honestly just take this if I was you guys. If you're curious about what's going to take, I'd just take this. These used to mean something. These are purely, purely decorative now. Okay. They don't mean anything. They've changed the way that it used to work. All right. Um, these used to scale. So unfortunately, you would actually have to buy these to get more and more percentage. I'm so glad that you don't have to do this anymore. So I would take this. It's a Spectre and you can use it to fight for you. You know, like those little rollerballs in the Grenier that come charging you down. Yeah, you can basically summon one of these and you can make it fight for you. It's pretty cool. So uh, when we click view offerings, uh, do we have anything available right now? Uh, no, I can get sigils. I can't get anything here. I need to be rank general for this before I can go in and get these. And I can't get anything else here just yet. 
unfortunately. But this is a good way we can get relic packs. We'll be able to go and buy like relics and stuff that can just open up random relics. Really, really cool. We can get different weapons in here as well, like the vehicle heck kind of shotgun. Um, different emotes. What's really cool about this as well, I don't think I actually explained this, and I apologize. It's only just crossed my mind right now. Um, if you're playing with another player, let's say that you're playing in a group of four or even a group of two, that's okay. My advice get one of you guys to pick one faction and get someone else to pick like the enemy faction. Because what can happen is um, let's say that I need something from, let's say I need something from Red Veil vale and I want to go ahead and, oh damn, I'm playing Necros and oh damn, that mod could actually be really good for my Necros Warframe, uh, but I'm not, I'm not using it. Then why don't, why not go ahead and take something from here, like a mod from here? Oh my God, you can get Bloodforge in here. Shoot. Um, this is really good. Oh my God, you can get a Clumulate. This is nuts. Um, sorry, I actually just want to look. Do you know what? Just whilst I'm doing this, feel free to go ahead and note this down or just whatever. I'm just going to go over these. That's all right. This is really good. This is actually... Wait, Ballistic Bullseye. Yeah, this is actually really good now. It got buffed. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. This is nuts. I can't stand this. Someone's going to say it's good. This is this is good quality of life early game, in my opinion. This is humongous. If you play Excalibur, this is basically one of your best mods that you can get on him. You want this. This is great for me. Uh, I don't find myself using this an awful lot, but I think it's still worth it. No. Uh, not really. I, it's fine, but it's it's niche. Oh, this is very good. Exothermic on Ember. That's that's fantastic. Uh, I don't really use that an awful lot. Yeah, I don't use this an awful lot, no. I don't really care for that, but you can do it. That's actually not that bad if you care about his Javelin, Excalibur's third ability. I don't think I've ever really paid attention to using that. <laughs> the nuke builds. Uh, no, don't. Just don't. It's a waste. Uh, don't either. Maybe you could. Maybe they can get like rewiped in the future, but oh, this is really good. This is healing. Uh, that could be pretty good. No, yes, this could be okay. It's good supportive. Who's this on? Emulated Radiance. Oh, Ember. Uh, no, I don't think she needs that. Insatiable, it's niche, but yes, you can do it. I think it's pretty good. Iron Shrapnel can... Uh, mm, mm. The fact that you can recast it is actually really good, so I guess I should say yes. I think like Charge is also kind of cool, but mm, falls off. Don't worry about these right now. They're just damaged towards Jaw Cleavers, so I guess they would be good, but only for Jaw Cleavers. Uh, I don't really care for it, but you can take it. Mace's Waltz is really nice. When when you use Mace's fourth ability, you can't actually move when you have it. This allows you to go ahead and walk. Molecular Fission, I personally really like. Um, Bertways, thank you so much for the $5 uh, dollar donation. That's very kind of you. Uh, Muzzle Flash is also really, really good. And it's a Helmet ability, just to let you guys know. Uh, Mito just got an Incarnan. Neutron Star, I personally like. All Gaze is a loot drop, so this is actually pretty good. Part of the statues is actually generally kind of nice. Phoenix Renault is the best Ogman that iron has got going for him right now, so this is really good. I don't really like Pierce and Raw, but that's up to you. Pilfer and Strangled Eye, one of the best Augments in the game, period. I'm not joking, and I will not back down from saying that. This is one of the best Augments in the game, period. And I mean period, as in like, it's superior. It's better than majority of other things you could ever get your hands on. This is nuts. Welcome to Warframe. You'll be farming a lot. Uh, this is okay. Uh, this, is, this is pretty good for like single target finishing. Reaping Chakra. Oh, this is actually pretty good. Yeah, this isn't really so much needed, but yes, it's not too bad. It's just a way to go ahead and get regenerative whilst also utilizing it. Um, no, unfortunately. In my two cents, no. Um, not really needed, but good quality of life. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, literally the main purpose of using this fourth. Uh, maybe it gets reworked. Who knows? Sorry. This might, Subject to change, okay? Subject to change. This isn't too bad. It's good for your teammates. This is really good. Get this. Uh, this is also not too bad. You can go ahead and take it. Uh, this is really good. Uh, take it. 
Uh, this isn't too bad. I don't care for this. I don't care for this. Uh, subject to change. Atlas is in a bit of a bad spot right now. Uh, this is kind of cool. You can take it. Um, really cool for like critical. This is the lost, right? I can't quite remember if I actually utilized this or not. So forgive me. Uh, this is just interesting. I would say no, but it's up to you. Do you know what? I, I, now that I think about it, I haven't really played around with Zaku augments. I'll have to get back to these. I apologize that I haven't really messed around with them. I'll get back to them. For any bodyguards, really good for survivability. And Venom Dose. And this is also really good as well uh, for speed running things. So there's like a bit of a rundown. If you guys want, like, if you took the Steel Path, a uh, Steel Meridian with me, I've now given you an idea, all right? In my opinion, I would go ahead and take the Pilfer and Strangle Dome early. This is very, very good. Try and get yourself Korra. Oh my God. I would take the Heck is what I would take. And since I'm on Excalibur, I would go and take the uh, Chromatic Blades. Those would be, those are probably the first three that I would lean towards, at least for now, Okay. At least I ain't got to cover that now, okay? If you guys took the Storm Meridian because I told you to take it, then you now know what to go for, all right? But do keep in mind, they're only for specific Warframes. Um, I was going to cover something, Argon. Okay, so Argon as a resource is a little bit different than other resources. So I want to go and show you guys about Argon uh, as a resource. Oh, if I go and click components here, I can go and find it. So if I hover over Argon, oh, it's not going to show me here. Sorry, one sec. If I go inventory from here, and if I hover over it, can you see that? It says decays in five hours and 10 minutes. What actually happens is um, Argon is the only resource that you will get that actually decays. So it's a void bound resource. And once you just kind of taken out of the void, um, it's a daily reset. So when tomorrow basically hits, um, I would have lost. Is it? It's not all of them, is it? I think it's like it's 50% or 75%. So I think if you have like 10, I think you lose five. Right? Yeah, someone else is someone in chat is basically saying it halves daily. So yes, if you had 10, I think it's five. I think it's something like that. One per day. It's definitely not one per day. I believe it's 50%. I believe so. Um, we could go use the Warframe Wikipedia. Can I get... Can, all right, if I've got multiple people saying it gets half, so yes, just I believe it gets half. So keep that in mind. You get Argon from Void over here, um, and you will get it over there. Um, but yeah, we'll get to the Void a bit later because we're not too far off actually going off to the Voids. I can slowly start doing Void things over there. And the Void, in my opinion, once you can get into the Voids, it's really good as a beginner player. You will get a lot of great things from the Voids. Oh my God, I thought like this episode's really good. I don't know. Sorry, I'm like excited. Did I miss anything to talk about? We good? Sorry, I am parched right now. Absolutely parched. Let me get some more water in me. Absolutely famished right now. My goodness. And hey guys, a friendly reminder. If you guys are enjoying this episode so far, can you guys go and leave a like uh, on the video? And that also includes, like, if you guys are watching um, and it's not live, um, I hope you guys are having a good time. Thank you guys for checking out the series as well. I really hope it's helping you. Um, again, do always remember, you can catch me live on Twitch. Um, I might be streaming different games, though. I might not always be streaming Warframe. I might have sponsors to go ahead and do, or thankfully, or I might just be playing another game because I'm just looking to chill out. But um, I'm always okay to talk about Warframe. It doesn't really bother me talking about Warframe. Um, just if I'm busy, then yes, I may not be able to answer your questions. So if you join my Twitch stream and you're like, hey, um, I saw your series. Uh, I was wondering, could I go ahead and do this? Oh, it's excavation. excavation Have I explained excavation before? I don't know. Let me go ahead and explain excavation. Basically, don't be afraid to reach out to me, but if I'm busy, I'm busy. Okay, so don't hold it against me. So this mission here is called Excavation. Excavation is basically like another defense, but you see these guys here, they're called carriers. You, ba you basically want to kill the carriers and you'll see that they drop these cores. Now, if you look on my excavator, you'll see it says halted. So it's not gaining any progress. On my map, you can see that there's cores in front of me on my map. What I need to go and do is I need to pick up these cores and put them in here and I'm charging the excavator. Every time I put a core in, I restore its shields 
and I give it more power. So if the excavator is low and it's lost all its shields and you want to heal the excavator just for shields, not health, if you want to heal the excavator, um, you can do so by putting a core in. So you see, like, it's losing health now. If I put that in, boom, there you go. It's got, it's got healed again. Unfortunately, when you do excavation in, like, endgame, enemies hit really, really hard. So <laughs> just keep that in mind. So Warframes here, that would be great, are defensive Warframes. Any Warframes that um, you can crowd control enemies with. So by doing this, because uh, your objective is simply just to go ahead and protect it. Okay, so things like Frost, things like Korra, uh, Limbo to mention, Vorban. These kind of Warframes are really, really good at just kind of protecting it and stopping people from getting to the excavator. Okay, um, once this is done, the excavator will basically break. So it will look like you failed it. Don't worry, you haven't. If an excavator does die, have you failed the mission? No. Don't worry. You just got to go and do another excavator. All right. So you can see there's another one that I could go do over there. All I need is 100 total cryotic. And as it breaks right now, we got the cryotic. Um, so that's now a successful uh, excavator. Something that I'm going to talk about these cores right now. If you understand what I'm saying, I'll explain this real quick. Cores are affected by drop chance. Basically, Necros is the spoil. Cora's Pilfer and Strangle Dome, Atlas's Ore Gaze. Yeah, you can get more cores from a, a guy who drops it. So if I had the spoil on, I could potentially get two cores from this one guy. If you didn't know that, you know that now, okay? Just to let you guys know, if you want to get more and more cores, uh, loot frames are really good. Also, you see how I've got this one up? Watch this. I'm just basically going to ignore it. There's a re you see this one over here as well? Look. Why am I summoning these and why am I ignoring them? Because every time that I get these, if this breaks now, so we actually want to watch it break. You see how I've got a hundred cryotic? I got this resource here. This scales on how many cores that I get. So if I get a hundred, if I get a hundred percent on this, then um, I get a hundred cryotic. But you see how it's now breaking? Watch. If I just purposely let this break as I'm going to extract from the mission, so now I'm just gonna ignore it. Watch. As I'm leaving, if it breaks, it'll give me 20 cryotic. So I'm also getting some cryotic as I'm leaving the mission. So you can just head towards the extract and just let them die. Yeah, not too bad, right? Not too bad. So it's a cheeky little way to go ahead and get some spare cryotic. Hopefully, if the enemies break it, they're not breaking it right now. Uh-oh. What happens? Why are the enemies not hitting it? Oh, well, that's a shame. I think they're coming towards me. I've moved too far from the objective. So I think they're seeking me out instead, which is interesting. Yeah, look. Ideally, you want them to go ahead and break it as well. Also, something that I didn't show you guys, but maybe I can show you in a second. Can you see how I'm taking damage? Well, inside these cold kind of planet tile sets, what you'll notice is these heat generators exist. You'll actually take time over... Uh, you'll actually take... Uh, damage over time not time over damage it'll actually take damage over time when you're not warmed up so um you will actually take some dot here i can't remember if it affects your health i'm actually just going to see if it does but i know it affects your shields and this can also affect you during hijack which is a game mission that we'll get to a bit later as well um but if you want to go and stop this dot that's hitting your shields because your shields can't regenerate whilst i've got this cold proc kind of on me Okay, so it does also do health. If I go next to a generator or near a generator, see that? It stops it. So if you see these generators, unfortunately, you can break them. Ideally, you don't want to break them because they're there for you. But in case you didn't know about that as well, just keep your eyes out for those. In case you're taking dot and you're like, why am I taking dot? Like, nothing's hitting me. Um, look for a generator. Warm yourself up. Do this next to it. Go. You know, <laughs> do a bit of that. I think I've been drinking way too much water because now I need a bathroom break, but I don't want to take a bathroom break whilst I'm doing the, this series. If I do take a bathroom break in a minute, I'm going to ask you guys to skip ahead, okay? <laughs> oh my. The operator has returned we're good right now. We're brewing, we're brewing. Right, let's go and get the harness. Uh, also, I don't need to go ahead. And, I don't know why I've got the bow on me right now. I don't need the bow. We can keep training weapons. Remember, I've got that endo to play around with, but you'll see I'm not really investing the endo into any mods just yet. The reason why I'm not investing the endo on mods just yet is because do I need to? 
as you may have noticed, the answer to that is no, I do not need to go ahead and invest the, the endo right now. So um, I'm not going to be doing that. I only invest the endo when I start to feel like, hang on a second, this damage has fallen off, this build has fallen off, I need more protection, I need more damage, whatever, you get the idea. Oh, pardon me, I genuinely apologize. Wouldn't mind looking for some stars as well, because remember, I got Maru's sculpture, and uh, I need some spare stars. So you see these caches? I'm going to keep breaking these caches right now. There's a power carrier over there. I can't wait to get more damage on my weapons. This is going to be so good. I'm actually really excited to go ahead and start ranking things up. Speed up the process a lot. The excavator stops. Every, every core that you have gives you 20%. Just so that you guys know. I think every excavator, I think, takes you around 1 minute 40 in total. Let's go ahead and do it. So I believe it's around that. Taking these guys down right now. All right, and this is done. So we're done there. Right, so I've got all of the components that I now need to go ahead and build the arc wing. So we're going to go ahead and do the arc wing quest, okay? So you see this excavator as well, remember? Because I'm leaving, I can just go ahead and run across this excavator to start it. And naturally, sometimes I just want them to die. Because uh, again, if it does go ahead and break... Yeah, see, it's 1 minute 40. When it goes down to 1 minute 20... Oh, remember these? Already explained these quite a few times. I'm also having a little scan around, see what I'm doing. Did you see what? Oh, I see loads. Look how many over there. And remember the tip that I, I gave in like the very first episode? Go up against dark services and look through dark services. Because. Oh my goodness. Oh, I can explain something. Okay, you see how I almost got stuck there? This is really good that I teach people this. I forgot all about this. This is a command that exists in Warframe, but you can only do it once every so often. If you get stuck in something and you need to get unstuck, you can actually do something called slash unstuck. You see how I like teleport my Warframe just for a second? You cannot spam this that often, okay? But if you get stuck in something, do slash unstuck and it can unstick you from an area. Oh, let's think. I now got 120 cryotic because they broke the excavator whilst I was just kind of talking to you guys. But it's really good that I show you guys that command as well. Um, it saves you from like, don't leave a mission or anything else like that. Try slash unstuck. If slash unstuck doesn't work for you, then yeah, you might have to leave the mission. All right, so just keep that in mind. I would leave, but again, I'm just going to cheekily look for a star if I can. Just some kind of bonus loot here if I can get it. Excavator destroyed. Protect the yeah, and that's fine. We don't... There we go. There's a star. And I got myself a Cephalon Fragment as well. So remember, we explained what these are. These are just kind of like lore things that you can go and get. Still worth collecting them. Oh my goodness. See, this is... I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. I always have more success of checking stars in that area than any other area. 
And we got an amber and a cyan, so it pays off. You see that? It pays off. Sheesh. You love to see it. You love to see it. You could all do a slashing question mark. Oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't know that one existed. So, right, let's keep going then. So, extract systems. We're going to get the systems as well. And then hopefully we'll be done with this. The Orkin Archive has led us to this location. Defend the extractors until you find an Arkham Heart reprint. <gasps> Oh, no, I, I do this every time I reach a section. Am I sure there's not any? I keep gaslighting myself in this area. Yeah, there isn't any. Don't worry, I'm just gaslighting myself right now. I'm making myself believe that something's actually there when it's not. Taxol's actually really good against the Infesteds. It can just slow them down. And since majority of the Infested are melee, the Taxon's doing great work here. I was just going to try and see if I can shoot that down. Oh, I didn't actually show you guys this, but there's like a bit of an animation cancel that you can do whenever you're picking up, um, whenever you're picking up cells. So I kind of want to show you guys. If you like roll over it, for example, and then hold X, see that? See how I like picked it up? Whereas if I do this, see it? See that? There's like an animation cancel. Just roll over it and then grab it. I sorry, I forgot to like teach you guys that, but. It's, uh, it's good for animation cancelling. Yeah, sliding doesn't work. I just wanted to double check if sliding worked or not. One thing I'm taking pride of in this series is that there are people who play Warframe as much as what I do who don't know this stuff. <laughs> and I, I love being able to catch them off guards. Doesn't matter how many hours you got in this game, you just can't know it all. <laughs> but yes, so like if I run over this, it'll lock me. But if I roll over this, I can just insta grab it. <laughs> I just try to hey, just try to make people better at the game, all right? Like, I know I'm a Papega and I mess up a lot, but if I can give you guys some kind of knowledge, uh, my job here's done, right? I was looking for frost leaves. Oh, frost leaves can actually be here though. That I do know because this is considered a cliff. But there's, there's actually not that many that are here. Cross leaves don't always guarantee to spawn, so keep that in mind. So they're not here right now. Excavator destroyed. Oh, that's good. So again, it breaks an excavator and I still get extra rewards. I don't know if I can actually go in there or not. It's been a while. I think you can drop underneath here and go down here as well. Some people don't know about this section. Where you can like loot, loot for extra loot down here, or look for extra loot. Because most people just cross these bridges, right? Like you just look across here and you just you just run straight across it. But if you just jump off, there's normally like a little vent down there that you can just drop in. This one doesn't have it, as you can see. Anytime I see a cliff, I keep thinking frost leaf. It's not quite how it works, but I like my brain trying to just uh, scour for information right now. And I'm, I'm looking for stars because we, we desperately want stars right now. This section I normally get stars in whenever I do stuff like this. Oh my god! <laughs> Brother! Oh man. The hours pay off, I'm telling you. The hours pay off. 
the amount of times like when you're leaving i don't know why and this could be complete bs what i'm about to say complete bs but whenever you're leaving a mission normally like i swear the last couple containers that you check normally has a higher rate of stars and i don't know why this is i don't know if it's just my account but it's something i've always noticed i've noticed it for like four years i'll always be like yo the last couple of uh, things if i'm desperate for stars i always go and check the last couple of caches and uh containers always check it so we've got to go and build the found uh, foundry no we haven't sorry we've got to go and build the uh Arcwing right now, so we're going to type in Odinata. Odinata is just one of the Arcwings that we can go and uh, get. And uh, we don't need to rush this. Oh, I'm missing a Neurodes. Oh, wow, we're actually missing something. So I need to go and get a Neurode right now. Um, so what I'm going to go and do is go over towards Earth. And uh, my advice, do a capture mission. So um, I'm just looking for a Neurode uh, kind of cell thing is what I'm looking for. Um, so I'm doing a capture mission because I don't actually have to focus on doing um, Yeah, I don't have to focus on killing these or I don't have to focus on you know surviving or whatever else it may be There's a curio somewhere here No Feels like my mind's trying to tell me something is there not? What is normally here? Something's here. I recognize something being there, but I can't remember what it is. So again, right now, besides I'm looking for stars, so I'm going to keep breaking containers and, and caches and stuff. Uh, I'm mostly just looking for a neuraled, a neuraled, uh cell, if you will. Uh, also, that's right there, so I'm going to scan it. You'll learn like what plants to go ahead and look for as you keep playing. So don't worry, it'll, it'll come to you over time. If not, you can just use my stream as guidance. Uh, I will go and take some of these ones. I'll just see another one here. No, I thought I did. Any neurons here? Seems like this is the correct way to go. I think I need to actually go back and do that. It might actually send me this direction. Normally what I like to do in Warframe is I like to go and take the wrong route on purpose. Because normally I'm looking for something in particular. So if I know this isn't the correct way to go, then I purposely go the wrong way. Because then that way I cover more of the tile set. How did I miss him? Okay, you just stay there, bud. Let Taxon do all the work. There we go. I just need a Neurodes. Is it going to send me that way? Yeah, look. See, it sent me that way. We're looking pretty good so far, though. These guys aren't really worth affinity to me. I don't know why I'm killing them. I'm kind of wasting my time killing them. Because they're, they're such low levels. There's just no point. Ow. Don't care for that. Don't care for them. Oh, this is a bit tough. I can't really find a Neuroid at the moment. Get these uh, sunlight fresh cones and we'll go and get these get in the habit of just scanning it so i feel like if i can do it and get in the habit of scanning it i'm hoping i'm teaching you guys to get in the habit of scanning plants you will need them later okay the earlier that you start plant scanning the better that it is for you if you don't want to do it now you don't have to but again i highly recommend it Wait. There's definitely something here. <laughs> Dude, I was gonna, it's it's crazy how much my my mind is going. Nope, there's something here. I know there's something here. I don't know what it is. It can either be sculpture spots, it could be fragment spots, or it's couriers. 
but my mind knows that there's something here. Just, I wish I knew what I knew. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's on a pipe. It might be a sculpture spot. Wait, check it for sculptures. Oh, wait, I, where am I? Oh, I don't see this tile set that often. What is this used for? Oh, I really don't see this tile set that often. What the hell's going on there with that? Definitely no curious in here because I would recognize this area. Again, I'm not really looking for curious. I'm just kind of like roaming about. Um, I see no neuroids though, so this isn't that good, unfortunately. A better way for me to go and get neuroids is normally if you're looking for like a rare currency or like a rare resource, I should go and say, on a planet. Oh my gods. I wasn't expecting to find this. Um, I'll explain what this is in a second. Remember all those plants? This is where the plants start paying off, by the way. Um... Yeah, there you go. Requires apothic. Uh, we have no apothics. The plants are what you use on apothics. Apothics is what you use here. What you fight here, well, that's something that you get to a little bit later. Okay? But once you start building apothics, you can go ahead and see this like waterfall that you see here. This is what you want to be doing. You go out towards this and you use your apothics on that. You'll get introduced to this, so don't worry, all right? It's called the Silver Grove. Um, but it's not something that we're looking for right now. Okay, I have not been lucky with finding neuroids, unfortunately. So this is a bit of a waste of time. But unfortunately, I can't progress any further until I find a neuroid. So yeah, you can either go do capture missions like I'm doing. Or like I was trying to say, you could go ahead and try and kill the boss that is located on the planet. But I don't have access to the boss at the moment, I don't think. I think I actually need to do Arcwing to get to the boss. Stay a so I just want to try and get a bit lucky here. I'm really hoping I can get lucky here with the Neuroids. Just one Neuro. That's literally all we need, game. One Neuroids. Come on. Bless us. See these like deposits? This could have been a Neuro deposit. That's what we're basically looking for. Oh my god. That. That's what we're looking for. See that? Neuroids. I got two Neuroids as well because of the... Uh, the resource uh, blessing that we got, which is really, really good. I got two neurons out of that. Yes, sir. See the section here? Well, you know what I'm going to do. <laughs> you know what I'm going to look for. If I get another star out of this, this is actually rigged. Because I there's no way. I got so lucky doing it last time. Like I said, it's not a guarantee. Whoops. It's not a guarantee. It's just uh, the amount of times I tend to find... <laughs> there's just no way. The amount of times I tend to find one in areas like this. It's just so crazy. It's like whenever I leave a mission... And it knows I'm leaving the mission. And it knows I'm just like by the last couple of uh, loot caches. It like promotes me to go ahead and do it. It's crazy. It's crazy. All right. It's crazy. But there you have it. It's just that easy. All right. It's just that easy. By the way, if you're enjoying this right now, go ahead and leave a like on the video. And also, I mean, I don't get a chance to say it too often, but whether you guys are watching live or you guys are watching, uh, you know, through the VODs, uh, if you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing. But I do hope these episodes are, uh, you guys are enjoying and they are helping you, all right? Because that's the goal of them. Now, give me some feedback. If it is helping you, let me know. If it's not helping you, let me know. <laughs> Why is it not helping you? Is it because I'm not too far in the game yet? Is it because I'm not explaining things well enough? Like... The more feedback I can get, the more that I can work on these episodes. But this is my first ever time of a beginner series. Could I do a new beginner series in 2024? Maybe. I'm not going to say yes, maybe. Could I do it in 2025? Probably. But right now, this is just my first ever one. This is 2023, and it's going to probably be my only one. But we'll see what happens. 
who knows? Maybe the videos can get some discoverability. The more that people like, share, and talk about it, the more that it can help. So, and the more that it can help, then the more that I'm inclined to, to want to push more with this series. Because honest to God, if this series right now, and I'm just going to say this nicely, all right? Uh, man's got to pay the bills and the rent, okay? But if this series right now was pulling like thousands of views, I wouldn't do this weekly. I would do this daily. But because I know it's not going to pull thousands upon thousands of views, I'm doing this weekly at the minute. So there we go. We got the Odinata. That's going to take 10 minutes. What can we do for 10 minutes? Hmm. Heat sword wouldn't be too bad to go ahead and build. Oh my god, I can actually get the Oricon Catalyst on the builds. That would be so worth building. Yes, I'm going to do it. So Oricon Catalyst, if you guys remember, I talked about this briefly. Uh, not even briefly, I explained it completely in uh, last episode. This is going to be a way to double the available mod capacity. And remember, Catalyst, the blue ones, these are for weapons. Reactors, the gold ones, they're for Warframes, okay? I don't need to build any Warframes. I mean, I'm not looking to build Rhino or Mag or anything like that at the current moment. Oh, we can get a Spectre. I think we should build one of these because I'm fairly, I'm almost confident a junction requires to go ahead and build one of these. So I'm going to build it in advance and it's going to take 5,000 Ferrite, which kind of sucks. Um, but I, I'm confident. I'm confident. All right. I'm confident. Uh, it doesn't matter my loadout. I don't care. I'm fairly confident that I just need to build one. So keep in mind, it will copy what I have. Okay. So if I change my loadout right now, it will change my loadout with it, okay? So it's going to copy my loadout and put it in there. Yes, I'm going to build some. It's going to take eight hours, which means I think it's around like, I think it's either Jupiter or Saturn, something like that. I'm fairly certain. I've done a second account before, um, but I did it for stream. But this was like five years ago, four years ago, four years ago. I did a second account. And I do remember I was held back because I had to go ahead and do a Spectre thing. And I was like, God damn it, this is so annoying. Um, so I'm going to build them anyways, just on the off chance. Okay, let's go and have a little look at some mods then, shall we? Sort of my duplicates again. I can actually go and get rid of all of these because remember, I've got one equipped. And how do you know if you have one equipped? I spoke about this uh, recently. You see that little icon at the bottom? See that one there? This little icon here? This means it's equipped somewhere. Okay, if it doesn't have this icon at the bottom of it, so you see how that doesn't have an icon there? It means it's not equipped anywhere. So this vacuum is equipped somewhere. Something has this. So this is what I want to rank up. So you see, I have a vitality equipped. I only need one vitality ever, period. So all of these other vitalities are going to get removed. We just get rid of them. Okay, just to help you guys understand how that works. We get rid of one of those, get rid of one of these. If I've got two of every mod, you only really need one. So just try and keep one of every mods, okay? So we're going to go and dissolve those. But I have 2,000 right now. One of the better things that I could go and focus on is vacuum. I wouldn't mind getting this up because extra vacuum is going to be really, really good. Problem is, how much ender does that take? 310? I'd honestly rather have damage and stuff. I might go ahead and take it to rank 4. So it's currently 6 meters and then it'll be 10 meters. I think I'll take it to rank 4 right now. So it's not an awful lot, but I'd still rather have it. Um, ideally, I should max that out, but I'm kind of a bit starved right now. I'm a bit starved, guys. I'm a bit starved. Um, until I can get a shotgun. Oh, do you know what? I'm MR3. So at this point, I haven't really taught you guys about this, but have a little look in the market. What's currently available for you guys to go ahead and pick up? Uh, primary weapons and so forth. I'm actually going to advertise this because honestly, why not? Uh, I think this is a good thing to go and advertise right now. Uh, this is my Discord. Um, and on my Discord, if you go to this section here, it's called Warframe Guides. Now, guys, I don't know if I'm going to have this on my Discord forever. Um, as the years continue to progress, I'm not working on updating this anymore. Please hear what I'm saying. The reason why I'm doing that is because I don't get paid to do the Discords. But I want to show you guys what I actually have on the Discord if you guys are new. I have math sections over here. I've got Railjack sections, everything and anything you need to know about builds and how it's all done. I've got Arcane sections, what are Arcanes, where to get them, how many to go and get them. I've got Subsume sections, all of this about Subsuming. What is Subsuming? Where do you go do it? How do you unlock it? What should you work with? How should you go? Yada, yada, yada. 
modular sections, amps, kit guns, all, everything you need to know about modulars. This might overload you. Let me get to the point, right? Let me get to the point. MR weapons. If you're newer to the game and you're like, hey, I, what's a good MR weapon if I was melee for MR3? Sure, just go here and I've already ranked them in here for you. So it's quite a good, quite a few good ones, but Cronin and Tipido seem to be the better picks. So if you're looking for weapons and you're MR3, have a little look here, okay? All of the lists are broken down. Let's say you're MR12, there's all of these. Get the idea? The Discord does exist. Feel free to go and use it. I don't know if it's going to be there forever because at some point it might go ahead and get outdated. But for the rest of 2023, I would assume it will still be there. I have no intention to take it down, but I have no intention to update it. So I would say I apologize, but I don't because unfortunately I'm, I'm not gonna. Uh, Vectors, by the way, is really good for me to go ahead and get. I kind of want to work on this. So I need Neurodes, I need Oricon Cells, I need Nanospores, and I need Rubido. I'm not gonna lie to you, this weapon slaps. Like it deletes enemies early. So I kind of want to get that. But the thing is when I go ahead and get Heck, it's between Heck and Vectus, so I'm probably going to end up running Heck anyways. So I don't really feel like I need to switch right now, so I'm not going to. Um, heck is MR4, by the way. Yeah. So this is what I want to go and get. So in next episode, I will have the Heck. That's that's going to be my goal, was to get that. Um, which means primary weapons I don't care about, but is there anything like secondaries that I can go and get? Gamma Core is pretty good. I'm going to tell you this right now. Currently, don't ever buy this. It's, it's currently the worst weapon in the entire game. Through like primary, secondaries, and melees. Uh, it's currently the worst weapon in the game. It might get revisited, but don't buy it. Okay? It's just not worth your time. All right? Lex is pretty good, actually. That could be very good to go ahead and pick up. Oh, it's just 50,000 credits. Go and build it. I think we should take that. Before I go ahead and do it, let's go ahead and search melees. What kind of melees have I got in here? Wait, I can get Azathane. Oh, I see. This is all Daviri. Don't worry. We do Daviri next episode. Ooh, there's, ooh, there's a couple of good ones in here right now. Grams in there, which is nice. Galantine's in there. Cronin's right there. Sendo's not too bad. Tipido's pretty good. If you can get your hands on Siam, that's kind of nice. Silver and Age is pretty fun to play around with. Glaive's going to be pretty good. There's a few good ones in there. I don't really know what I'd lean towards. What do I care about? Oh, Orthus as well is in there. What's the crit chance of Orthus? Ah, oh, it's pretty low. I want Gwando. I think Gwando's MR4 as well, no? Right, when I get MR4, I'm basically going to end up getting this thing here. It's called Gwando. Um, So if you guys get ahead of me right now, um, you're looking for this thing. Gwando is probably what I would take for my melee of choice early, and Heck is what I would take for my uh, primary. Uh, so I just need a secondary. I think I'm going to take Lex. Sycharis is also not that bad for what it's worth. It's got a decent amount of crit. But Lex is, Lex is nice, you know. 104 puncture. What am I currently ranking? Leto. Okay, yeah, I'm going to go Lex. I'm going to buy it. I think it's worth genuinely picking up. I want to train this thing as early as possible. Like, as early as possible. I want to go and get this thing completely uh, trained. This has a very high reload, so I'm going to definitely put that in over anything else for now. My Scalab is almost fully ranked out. Fantastic. Um, Nightwave. Oh my god, I've actually got it. Yes! I've got it. Holy crap. I wasn't actually expecting to get something here. So, credit offerings. Wait, I can actually get an aura. Energy siphons available. Sheesh. Um, this is really, really. I got really lucky here that this is on rotation. Really lucky. I think I have to. I just have to. So in the early game, energy siphon is going to be really nice for you to go ahead and grab because there's a way for you to go and get passive energy uh, sustainability. It's slowly just going to trickle in. 
Okay. Um, shield disruption is nice against Corpus. Loot detector can be kind of nice as well. Rifle amps not really needed. I'm taking this straight away. I now have an aura mod, which is great for my Excalibur. Um, from there, uh, ideally, I want nitane. I'm going to purchase 10 lots of nitane and then I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I am not willing to get carried away by spending all of this right now. Okay, so we're stopping because I could also go and spend this on next week's, right? It's going to take me a while before I slowly go ahead and get my way towards this one. So I'm just going to go and hold it, be sensible with how I spend it. And uh, we'll get back to that a bit later, right? But right now, this is brilliant because we now actually have... Yes! And look at that, look. The capacity, look, it goes up now. Boom. And that is a mod I will invest into. Here we go. Boom, 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 boom. It's 100% worth it. Off we go. There we go. So now I get some energy return. Oh, that makes me so happy. Yeah, so look at that. I got way more room. So unfortunately, this still looks awful. <laughs> unfortunately, this still looks really, really bad right now, unfortunately. Um, we'll sort this out at some point. But yeah, uh, I'm not overly needing to rush anything at this current moment. Uh, so, Braddon. Oh, Braddon doesn't actually have damage on it. Whoops. Uh, and we're going to put that on. Oh, no. Just put that in over there then. There we go. All right. At least Braddon will do a little bit more damage now. That's good. Garnish challenge. I'm not willing to... Ra I'm not already a big melee user. If you're a big melee user, rank this up, okay? I'm not a big melee user, so I'm not looking to rank that up at the current moment. And same kind of goes here. I'm not looking to rank this up at the current moment. All right? But if you are a big, big melee user, then go for it. This is all ranked up as well, which is really nice. Um, if anything, I'm just going to go and put cryo rounds on it. And I can do a little bit of extra damage. So all I'm basically doing is getting this go ahead and just shoot a bit more. Um, it could do magnetic. Oh, do you know what? Magnetic is probably not too bad to go and just let it do in the meantime. Um, although it removes... Oh, no, wait. It removes cold off it. Wait, hang on. It removes cold. No, I want the cold. The cold slow is just too good. So I'm just going to go ahead and let it carry on with doing a little bit more cold damage. So I'm going to leave it like that. And this also has... So I can put repair kit in here. I can get regen in here. This is really good, by the way. Um, molecular conversion is also going to be really nice for this bad boy. So we're going to go ahead and run those in there. Enhance vitality, spare parts. If it dies... There's a rare item uh, that you can go and drop on death, which is also really good. So we're just going to throw all of that on. Uh, we don't care about the stealth build for now, so don't worry about that. So we're looking really good. Was there anything new in the gear wheel? What can I add in? Yeah, look, I can now go and add in these specters, so I can go and equip those. See how I'm like slowly gearing up? That's what I mean. We're into the grind now. At this point in Warframe, we should start to get a little bit more com uh, comfortable with what's going on around us. Hopefully, as I've kind of talked and filled there, we've got the uh, Arcwing done. Awesome. Now I need to go and find the intel. So we're going to go ahead and finish us, this off. Chat, I am desperate for the bathroom. Do you mind if I just quickly go nip to the bathroom right now? Um, just skip ahead like 30 seconds or a minute. Uh, I'll timestamp this part as well that I've just gone to the bathroom, okay? So, but I desperately need the bathroom break and I'm not really going to edit this out. So it's just going to be 60 seconds. If you guys want to, feel free to go and ask some questions or feel free to go put some advice in chat. And uh, anybody who's kind of watching can also uh, do that as well. Uh, check it out but yeah just give me a, a quick minute sorry about this <laughs>
I'm sorry about that. <laughs> sorry about that, guys. Okay, I'm back. Oh my goodness. I was absolutely desperate for the bathroom there. Uh, how long are we in on this uh, video so far? We're currently three hours and something in. We did get onto series, which is also nice. Um, we want to try and get this Arcwing mission done nice and quick and then try and do a little bit more series. And again, we're into the grind of things now, so. I've always been still just progressing through everything. And again, like I said, I hope you guys have enjoyed everything so far. Oh, this is good. Yeah, my brand is starting to do a bit more damage now. Because I put the mods on it. The electric mod is good against the corpus as well, which is nice. Uh, what do I have to do here? Just search for intel. Okay, that's cool. We can go and get that bad boy done. Does anybody have any questions or anything? You wash your hands? I did. We got this amazing soap, by the way. Oh my god, it smells like heaven. Like, if heaven was a smell, it's this. And I don't even know what it is. It's kind of lavendery. Kind of lavendery. Um, I just really... Throw back? Oh my goodness. I haven't seen that name in ages. Why is he ASMR in me? Again, we're still going for stars. Ideally, though, I want amber stars at this point. Amber stars are definitely a lot rarer to go ahead and get. But we are looking. We are looking for those amber stars. So you see, I'm prioritizing canisters just a little bit more now, because uh, we want the endo from that sculpture. It's gonna be one of our better ways to go ahead and rank up. I'm not even going to lie to you, Chief. I haven't done this mission in so long. I don't even know what's going on. Wait. Oh, no. That's my keybinds. That's mine. <laughs> okay, here we go. We are going Arcwing, baby. Can't skip this, unfortunately. So, what is Arcwing in Warframe? Arcwing is basically our way to like fly around and do flying related content. Um, oh my goodness, my sensitivity. We got to Arcwing now, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. Do you know what? I might as well start a railjack just real quick. Railjack's a little bit more sensitive, though. Eight. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That sensitivity is horrendous. Oh, that's better. So we're now in Arcwing. Um, so you can go ahead and dash with Arcwings. Um, I like to buy my dash to C, but if you double tap uh, your shift or your like sprint button, you can go ahead and dash. These are Formarians. What is my first ability? Oh, right. So my first abilities are shields. <sighs> just use your melee on those guys when they have the shields up. There. Otherwise, they're just annoying. So yeah, you'll go ahead and enter all of the Arcwing phase of uh, Warframe. Here's the thing. There's a few things I could teach you about this, but can I be honest with you? I have a feeling that Arcwing will end up just essentially getting reworked and re-looked into. So just keep that in mind, all right? Um, but yes, Arcwing is not really something that you'll do a tremendous amount. And we tend to use Arcwings in open worlds to get around. That's mostly where we use Arcwings. Or we might use them in Railjack to get around. And again, I know you keep hearing Railjack right now and I haven't really explained it. Mostly because it's probably better for me to explain when I get to it. What? Oh my god, waypoints are just so cringe. <laughs> oh god. 
was gonna say, I was like, that's where I came from. So why why would my extract be there? Little fun fact for you guys, by the way. You see, like when I'm in Arkling, do you guys know the Warframe Titania? You're actually her size. When you're in Arkwing, you're actually like this big. All of Arkwing content is actually shrunk down, basically. You're very, very small. You're extremely small. So it looks like you're big. Imagine being like a, a miniature figurine kind of thing. It's basically that. They basically shrunk everything down because it crams it better into a tile set. So imagine just being like Titania right now. If you don't know Titania, don't worry, you'll know. There we go. Well, at least we got Sign Star out of it, so that's not too bad. Yes, not every a, a, a while ago, especially if you guys are a returning player, not uh, not every Warframe, uh, not every Warframe, not every Arcwing had a version to like blink to like teleport. But now all of the Arcwings have a way to blink now, which is great. And just like that, see, we're done. Arcwings done. It's out of the way. Um, so that's two quests done just kind of back to back right there and the Barry's Bazaar one was really important so i'm just gonna go and check my items and treasures oh my goodness look at this we can install wait is there an auto install no there isn't okay so we can install the sign star we can install the amber star and we can install the science star. Yes. So that was worth 325. It's now worth 1,575. Do you see that? So it's gone up. So again, we can go sell it. This is really, really important. Again, get in the habit of getting your... Look for sculptures. Get your sculptures. Start selling this stuff. Start getting endo. Start ranking up your mods. That's what I mean. We're into the grinds. That's the whole point about this episode. We are into the grinds. Keep in mind, by the way... Uh, next episode um, is all about the Viri Paradox. So we're going to put a pause on the progress that we're making through the star chart. I'm going to sell that. Oh, look at that. It's brilliant. You can sell these as well. My advice is not to sell them. Okay, hold on to them. Because again, you get more. Look, they're only worth 50 each. You get more if you put it in a statue. So yes, you can sell them, but hold on to them. If you're desperate for like 300 endo to go ahead and rank something, then yeah, sure. Just sell a couple. But otherwise, try and hold on to them, all right? You're in no rush for anything. No rush, no rush. Okay, cool. How are we looking for mods right now? Is there anything that I can focus... We're 3,000 endo, which is actually kind of huge. Um, is there anything on my Warframe that I want to bring up? Yes. I, okay, this piece was actually not doing anything. I don't know why I'm not being able to highlight stuff, by the way. I can't figure it out why well, I'm not being able to highlight anything. This is cracked Hornet Strike, so no. No, I don't think there's anything there that I want to rank up. Is there anything here that I want to rank up? Ranking this up is not a bad idea. Ranking this up is not a bad idea. I like using primary... Well, at the, at the minute, especially on this account, I like using primary weapons, so... Ranking this up is probably what I want to target. It's just a shame that uh, I don't have normal serration yet. I can get boar soon though, can't I? Boar might not be a bad idea to maybe stop trading Braddon and get onto boar instead. Or sh strun. I might be looking for a shotgun basically because um, I have point blank. And I can actually rank point blank, which means I will automatically do more on a shotgun than I will do on this. I might consider doing it. Uh, I'm going to finish off the vacuum mods. Where is it? Here. Because that was worth upgrading. I'm actually a bit lower on credits now as well. So keep that in mind. I'm going to need to go and get some credits. That's why we want to keep playing. So we did the Arkwing quest. Let's just keep going for a bit. Well, that's Sedna. Why am I going to Sedna? Uh, what's this one? Interception. Oh, this will actually be kind of interesting. Unless I... You know what? I'm going to ignore Interception. I'm going to go... Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take a bit of a different route. I'm gonna go down here and then come back over here and then over there. Also, unlocking Gabby is not a bad idea. So yeah, you should get the heck. I can't get heck until MR four. Otherwise, believe me, I'd get heck. There's a courier here somewhere. No. 
Oh no, there's like a rare cache here. This used to be part of a old raids. Warframe used to have raids for anybody who's um, tuning in as well or uh, you know joining during this series if you're a new player. Warframe used to have raids. They weren't really raids. You could play with up to eight people, so it was the most amount that we ever had to go and play with. Um, so, so yeah, it was. Um, it was kind of like our version of raids, but they they were going to be outdated, so they had to be. They had to be basically kind of reworked. So yeah, we don't we don't have uh, we don't have those raids, but this is where you would normally start. It's a raid called Law of Retribution, uh, but we we don't have that anymore. I'm being a lot more aggressive on caches right now. Ideally, maybe for the last like 30 minutes of the episode, I should really try to focus on progression rather than caches and stuff. So maybe I should just try and get this done. Uh, and then, like I said, remember, next episode is heavily focused on the very paradox. So everything you now know, you're almost going to have to somewhat scrap. Not completely, thankfully. Um... Yeah, you don't have to scrap completely, but um, the very paradox is going to teach us a lot of different things. Yeah, the very paradox is going to teach us a lot of different things, a lot of new things. So I'm going to try and give you as much of a breakdown into very paradox as I can. That's good. Look at like Oric and Cell nodes and stuff like that. And I should always try and kill Eximus. Whenever I see an Eximus, kill him. Also good because my Nightwave wants me to kill Eximus as well. Shouldn't really kill these guys because they're actually just a bit too tanky for me right now. There's an Oricon cell. That's good. <laughs> We're popping container. I'm like super quiet because I'm focused on all of the containers. somewhere there's something here there's always something here i can't remember where it is oh my god oh, i thought it was another oricon cells i was gonna say no way but i got a bit lucky look i got three oricon cells in this one run which is actually really good oricon cells you're gonna need a lot of by the way this uh material called oricon cell um you're gonna need a lot of them get very familiar with oricon cells okay Oh my goodness, do you need a lot of Oricon cells? Far too many. Don't quite know what where this one's trying to take me. 
Oh, it's there's a bridge. To, I'm actually blind. There's a bridge right here. There's a courier in this area. Sorry, I think I should just stop mentioning couriers. If, especially if I'm not going to go for them. I should just stop mentioning them. Careful of those bulls there. Alright, we're done with that. Not too bad. Not too bad. Oh, these guys. Prospectors. Pros oh, prosecutors. These guys you'll have to, um, at some point, I think you even need to, like, kill them or something. I can't quite remember what you need to do with these. But yeah, these are, like, special enemies that are on Ceres, and I think at some point, I don't know if it's required for a junction anymore, um, but at some point, I'm pretty certain they tell you to go ahead and kill prosecutors, but again, I don't know if it's required. I thought it was required for the next junction. Uh... And there's another sculpture right there. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, this episode is stacked with sculptures. Let's go. This is why you, sometimes you just turn your heads. All right, just turn your heads. Stacked with sculptures. That was Vestin Moss. There's a completely different tile set for Vestin Moss. See if it's rigged. One of these have to give me a star. Is it rigged? Right, it's not rigged so far. Not rigged so far. Oh, it's not rigged. I didn't get the stats because I got the sculpture. They gave me luck in sculpture instead. I don't think there's any more. Yeah, I don't think there's any. Can I go over there? No, you can't. Just gonna double check because I've never actually tried it. <laughs> I can't believe I've got another sculpture. That's so good. Oh, and I got a relic as well, which is nice. A D7 relic. Who's in that? Nidus Prime, Nagantaka, Strun Prime. Sheesh. Strun Prime is a very good gun. If you guys are looking for a good gun right now, Strun Prime also has an Incarnan, which are like new to the game, uh, which are also very, very strong. So Strun Incarnan is extremely strong. Uh, Nidus Prime is a very good Warframe. Uh, definitely more of a soloist, if anything, and a survivalist. So if you like running solo and you like running survivals, that's Nidus for you. Uh, Nag Attack is pretty good. It's kind of like, a, it's kind of like an auto met or like a, a fully automatic kind of crossbow. And then dual carries is, they're pretty good swords. I'd say there's better, but it's all good. Anyways, we got that, so that's good. So now I can skip. So I'm just kind of going, I'm going a little bit around interception right now. Um, just because in case I can't keep up with interception, uh, I just want to kind of make a bit more progress right now. Uh, making some progress towards uh, the bosses and bads. And also this episode, I was really hoping like I might have had frost this episode. Um... So one of the Warframes that I want to farm for is a Warframe called Frost. And Frost is going to be really good. What am I looking for? That. That's what I'm looking for. I remember these. So this is the plant that you can go ahead and get as well. That's like Saracenia. I knew there was something. I, I don't I went really quiet there, so I apologize for going quiet. But 
I knew I was after something because I knew there was something down here. I just couldn't remember what it was. And I got an amber star. <laughs> yes, sir. I can't remember if there's a courier in here, but never mind. Sorry. I need to stop talking about couriers. That's what I was originally looking for was the courier, but I just... I'm getting mixed up between couriers, plants, fragments. There's a lot of different like little things go ahead and look for in the game. I should always kill the Xmas because they're just worth more affinity. Plus, again, we're still working on Nightwave. What was I talking about just a second ago? I was talking about something, but I seem to have forgotten what I was talking about now. Oh, Frost. So one of the Warframes that I want to go and farm for is a, war a Warframe called Frost. And uh, I definitely will go and give you guys like a top five Warframes that I feel like you should probably go out there and farm for. So I'm going to give you a top five Warframes list. This list. Okay, because episode four, I'm going to be doing different things. All right. Good. Oh, is there anything else I'm looking for over there? I'm getting carried away fighting. I need to stop fighting. I've got the carrier in here though, haven't I? <laughs> See, I'm just constantly looking for uh, looking for caches right now. Oh my god, another amber. Is that two amber stars in one run? Let's go. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing right right now, but oh my goodness, I'm getting quite lucky with the stars. Have they upped like how often the stars drop? resource drop chance the resource drop chance might be it actually that's a shout that is actually a shout Let's go ahead and get this guy. You're not welcome. Stop being captured. No, you don't. You got captured with a weapon. You don't need a weapon. Certainly not giving you mine. You can give those rescue targets weapons if you want to. And give them like your secondary, but I'm not going to do that. I know it's here. There it is. <laughs> I knew it was here somewhere. I just couldn't figure it out. It's uh, when you come in here, it's above the door. That's so weird that he put that there. Like he just knew I was going to go over and loot that. I shouldn't be so quiet when I do this. It's, it's, I'm genuinely focused on just scanning, uh, scanning things. 
<laughs> no, no, I'm just chilling and chatting. But anyways, that's not too bad, right? So look at that mission. We got some of these right now. So we got some of the plants. We ended up getting two amber stars. We got a science star. You'll be surprised what you can gain from just looking around. So when people go and say, should I be looting caches? Should I be shooting this? Should I be doing that? Absolutely. If you're new to the game, definitely go for it because it's very, very rewarding. And again, it's a good way to go and get you guys a little bit of cheeky endo. So I would highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. I don't... Is that actually enough? Did I have a spare science star? I might actually... I did. Yeah, look at this. So I've already... I've just filled in this as well. So 700... 1,200 and 1,700 endo. Look at that. So I don't need the endo at the current moment, but this is going to be great because now you can see I'm slowly starting to rank things. So this is the assassination mission. Um, right. I think in order for me to go and do this, I have to switch again. So go back to what your, whatever your strongest weapon is at the current moment. Right now, it's going to be this bad boy. Um... Part of me wants to rank it up further, but if I do, I hurt the Braddon. Hang on, can I get... Can I get all three out of that? I'm gonna do two and wait. I didn't know. Have I got one drain? I got one drain, so I can actually rank up Stormbringer completely. And is it worth doing that? Absolutely. It's gonna chunk into my credits right now, but it was so worth it. I have my first 90% elemental mod complete. So it's a shame I've only got serration and this at the moment. It is what it is. There's not much else I can really do about it, but I can work with it, right? So this is really good. I could chuck that in there. It's a shame because I can only get magnetic on this. and I don't want just magnetic. I'd rather just keep electric on its own. Um, but I can go and run that and I can also go and run this for extra. Nothing else here really matters. I could go and rank up... Uh, the reload speeds, but that doesn't really matter either. None of this matters. It's not really worth me spending endo here. So, but at least I go ahead and get more damage, which is great. So we need to go ahead and do this anyways. So this is going to defeat these guys. And then I need to get up towards thingy. So, oh, right. Let's go ahead and give you guys a list right now. So here's my advice for, here's my advice for, five warframes that i think every new player and every player in warframe wants to acquire please keep in mind this is just an opinion please keep in mind that there's strengths and weaknesses across the entire boards and keep in mind i'm trying to be as universal as i can if you don't understand what i'm saying by any of that you will understand when i give you the five picks and it will make sense so let's start off with where am I getting them from? All of these Warframes can be found within the star chart. So you don't need a dojo. You don't need to go ahead and farm like um, Vox Solaris standing within Fortuna. I'm not even talking about Solaris United. I'm talking Vox Solaris. So like an extra layer. It's not like a Baruch, a Hildren. You get the idea? These Warframes are a bit more accessible. But let me explain them. The first Warframe that I would recommend for a player to go and get is going to be Frost. The reason why I recommend Frost is because Frost is going to be your more so defensive Warframe. This is going to be blocking things with line of sight. So this is going to be anything like excavation. This is going to be anything like um, just defense in general. This is going to be things like mobile defense. You kind of get the idea. Anything and everything that you're looking to defend with, Frost is going to be your guy. Where do you get Frost? Ceres. Okay. That is number one frame that I recommend. He's going to be very good and you can actually use Frost even in late game instead of taking him for more of a snow globe build because that's what he goes for. He puts like a globe over something. So it's like a big snow globe. Instead of you doing that, you'll end up taking him from like an armor strip build and it can scale very well in end game. Okay, so he's still going to be a good frame. There's still better frames than Frost, but for now, uh, you're not wasting your time. So, for example, you could go and get Rhino here, but in my opinion, Rhino gets outranked pretty quickly. Just my opinion. Okay, so now that we got Frost on Ceres, um, the other one that I want you to then go and get is on Deimos, and it's going to be against Lathantus. This is going to be, and I think this is the number one frame that I want every single player in Warframe to must have. It's going to be called, so this is Deimos, it's going to be called Necros. 
Necros is your utility. Now, Warframe is all about materials. I know this isn't... He's not like a, a particular specific mission. He can be. I can put him in. But utility. He's all about basically resources and loot. Okay? Um, this is going to be things more so like um, survival. Maybe like defense, for example. Um, I guess there's a, there's a few other things that I guess you can go well with. But let's just say survival defense. He could also be using excavation. That's fine. Um, anything that basically goes on for a long time. Um, and anything where he can kind of hold an area down. He wants to be with the team. So, for example, interception, not really. I wouldn't really pick him. In, you can, but I wouldn't really pick him an in interception. Um, what's What was the other one that I was thinking of? Oh, excavation. You can do excavation as well, because like I said, he can affect the power cells and how they drop. You could go ahead and do that, but Necros is so goddamn good when it comes to materials. If you want me to, or if you want to understand how Necros works, listen to this. His third ability is called Despoil. For now, it basically means when an enemy dies, you lose health. Just for now, for when an enemy dies, you lose health. He'll basically do this. He'll like consume the enemy's corpse, right? So it's called Desecrate. Um, he'll he'll consume the enemy's corpse and then what will happen is he flips a coin okay lose energy oh god give me a second chat my god anyways he flips a coin when you consume the enemy course you flip a coin there's like a 54 percent chance that it lands on heads if it lands on heads you get double the loot if it lands on tails it's fine it nothing happens you could still get single loot or you get no loot Okay, that's basically how he's working. Necros is so good, but he does require enemies to be killed. There is something that I could go ahead and say with the whole, if you split an enemy in half, so if an enemy gets split at the torso, so if you use like slash weapons and an enemy splits, so you go healthy and then, uh, sorry, I keep reading chat. I need to stop reading chat because they're not letting me cook right now. I've realized I've gone wrong, but you split an enemy in half the body goes here and like the legs go there you can basically consume the the body and you can consume the legs now it's like two bodies so it's a really weird thing but basically my point is when it comes towards necros you basically go ahead and consume enemies and then you flip a coin and you can get double the loot Warframe's filled with resources and you're gonna need resources. Necros is definitely, in my my eyes, he's the top pick every Warframe player ever, whoever's played Warframe, period, needs to have. I'd argue when you get a little bit later, there's obviously Korra takes over a little bit, but Necros stacks with Korra. If that doesn't mean much to you right now, don't worry, but Necros stacks with Korra, okay? That's all you need to know. From there onwards, now that I've given you, you've got defensive, you've got utility, uh, Valkyr, Hangy, Ember, um, oh, um, it's here. Okay, this is where it gets a little bit weird, but Jupiter and Pluto, let me talk about those in a second. Jupiter's your next one, but it's actually going to be Neptune for now. So what we're then going to do, we're going to go over to Neptune, and Neptune, I want you to go and grab Loki. Loki is going to be, in my opinion, your stealth frame. And keep it more in the sense of um, he is mostly about movement speeds. Okay? So from here onwards, this is going to be things like rescue tile sets and things like spy tile sets. All right? Um, sorry, I'm getting messages everywhere now. Um, Loki's going to be all about stealth. At some point, you're going to have to learn how to go and do spies. Because if you don't like them, you won't like them anymore when something happens kind of a little bit later on another planet that you can't even see on the screen because I'm too new of a player on this account. Spy missions will start to get a lot harder, okay? So there's, there's more things that you will unlock. And spy missions will get harder. You want to slowly learn how to do spies and how to make them as efficient. Take a Warframe that will do it. Some people will argue Ivara. That's fine. I'm not going to argue for Ivara. I'm going to argue for Loki. The reason why I'm arguing for Loki is because he has less movement speed restrictions than what Ivara does. 
take whatever one you want. I don't care which one you pick, but God forbid, please go ahead and take one here. We don't take Ash at the moment, but that's a whole different ball ballpark. You can run Ash, but don't. Anyways, moving on. So that's that's Loki right now. Yeah, he's hard to grind. Right. Um, from there onwards, we've then got this is where your support frames come in. Okay, this is where it gets a little bit weirder. So it splits into two. So I'm giving you top five Warframes that I would personally pick. Top five Warframes for new players slash all players. These are like what I would call targeting or targeted Warframes, if you will, because they all serve a purpose, all right? These next two get a little bit, because you'll see why, okay? You'll see why. I feel like you need a support frame. And the support frame that you're going to end up picking up is one called Trinity, right? This is where it also changes because the other support frame that I want you to pick up is also called Wisp. Let, let me cook. Trinity has a bit of an issue at the current moment. Trinity is one of the best support warframes that you could possibly want when it comes to actually ideally taking what she gives. Trinity can give you health. Trinity can give you shields. Trinity can give you energy. What more do you want from a support frame? It can give you health, it can give you shields, and give you energy. It's also focused on resources and utility towards your warframe. Other things that you would want could be things like crowd control, buffs, weapon damage, debuffs, so forth, yada, yada, yada. Bear with me. Trinity is going to be really good. The issue with Trinity, unfortunately, this could be subject to change, is Trinity is tied to, unfortunately, one of the worst bosses in the game. That is so incredibly tedious to farm. It's not hard. It's tedious. It's mind-numbingly boring. And I, I, there's a lot of people who are not a fan of it. Trinity um, is going to be your support frame. Um, there's not much else I can say here. But I'll just go and put it in here. Energy, health, shields, so forth. That's kind of her focus. She's going to be on Pluto. You have to do something called Ambulus. I don't actually know which one Ambulus is on. Is it Hades? I can't remember. But you have to go and do something Ambulus here. And Ambulus is just not fun. They might revisit it. They might change it in the future. I have no idea. Um, for anybody who's returning back to the game, in case you turn around and say, Oh, no, that's where Excalibur is. Uh, no. Okay. Free Warframes did a major swing shift. So this is not for a new player. Don't worry, you can disregard this. But Excalibur, Frost, and Trinity kind of swap positions. So Frost used to be on Mars. It's not. It's now Excalibur. Trinity used to be on Ceres. It's not. It's now Frost. And Excalibur used to be on Pluto. It's not. It's now Trinity. They basically did a major shift. So it's a bit weird, but just keep up with it, okay? Anyways, Trinity is over there little bit annoying here's the thing this this one is more of an investment wisp without a doubt is arguably or considered if not the best support frame in the game when it comes to end game she, those, those reservoirs she has a first ability and her reservoirs are just way 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 too good oh she can also give you damage reduction sorry i forgot about that um, her, her reservoirs are way too good. She's your other support frame. The problem is, is that although this one is a, is tedious to farm, this one requires a particular setup to farm. You'll learn about something called amps. I'm not going to go into it right now, but once you get there, it's more of a story thematic thing that you'll do, which is kind of the Rapolalist. It's here. It's very story thematic. But yes, I would rather that you went ahead and got her. She'll give you things like movement speed. She'll give you minor crowd control. So kind of like electric uh, crowd control, stuff like that. She'll give you a massive boost towards health. She gives you a lot of different things, all right? She's just really, really good. So that doesn't even include like the reload speed, fire rate, whatever. Just, all right, that's how it goes. I would argue get Wisp over Trinity. That being said, though, it's so hard to choose between the two because an early game, I would say get Trinity, but you would replace her with Wisp. In the same way that I say get Frost, but you replace him with Gara. Okay. And for the final frame that I go ahead and personally recommend, I know this is five, but this is more like a special shout out, this one. Uh, the final frame that I recommend <laughs> is also an issue. Um, we have damage dealers. Um, and I cannot pick one here because everybody argues over these two. And I'm sure chat will argue over these two in a second. There is no right, there is no wrong. Just take whichever one you want to, for the love of God. Uh, we're gonna have Eris, and we're gonna have Mesa, and we're gonna have uh, Sedna, and we're gonna have Saren. Um, there is no right or wrong. These are your damage dealers. 
okay? Literally just, this one is all about uh, gunplay. Um, effortless, in my opinion. Um, protection, buff, and um, I'm going to say zone control because that's kind of what she's about. You're kind of zoning off an area, so you're focusing on that. Saren um, is more... You can also go and say gunplay here because it technically she technically is, but she's all about ticking, dotting, so or, or just say damage over timing, if you will, um, debuffing, um, and she's actually got one of the best survivabilities in the game because due to shield gain, so I could go and say survivability. Um... Molt, this is that toxic lash, and then molt, and then viral debuffing, and then corrosive buffing, and so forth. I'm just gonna go and put survival because I generally do feel like her her molt is just way too good, but it's gonna be good when you get towards shield gating. Listen, oh my god, I don't care what anyone else says. Just pick whatever one you want. Just trust me. These are what I would consider the top five warframes. All right. These are what I consider the top five Warframes. If, I, if you said to me, hey, I need to go and pick five Warframes. Clark, what should I aim for right here, right now? Those would be my suggestions. They're up on the screen. Frost, Necros, Loki, Trinity, Wisp, Mesa, Saren. Okay, so Trinity and Wisp are kind of like one recommendation and Mesa and Saren are one recommendation. It's up to you which one you want. It's entirely up to you. They're also a little bit different in play styles. So keep that in mind. But ideally, these are your damage dealers. These are your supports. This is your utility stealth. This is your utility resources. And this is your defensive. You have now got a Warframe for everything. Genuinely for everything. Because even Trinity could go do things like hijack. So you've actually got a Warframe for literally every single mission that you can go ahead and do, from what I'm aware of. Have I missed anything? Probably not. I don't think so. Focus farming's different. <laughs> but we'll get to that another time. But anyways, um, is there anything else to go ahead and talk about here? Or how are we looking? Um, we just got towards the bosses here, but unfortunately, I think we've fell short of time. Oh, it's such a shame because this episode's been really, really good. Uh, let's go to Mara's Bazaar and go and sell a sculpture. Um, I'll take like any last second, last second questions, like very, very last second questions. Uh, if not, then we are coming towards the end of the episode. Um, as always, those guys, as always though, guys, I'm going to have timestamps for everything once I go ahead and finish this. So please bear with me, but I will try and go and get around everything as well. All right. Um, it's going to take me a bit of time. Uh, but hopefully, you learned a lot today as well. Again, we're into the grind stage of Warframe now. As you can see, I've got this to do. I've got that to do. I can do this. I can do that. You see what I mean? The game's now opened up because there's so many different areas that I can be like, oh my god, I could focus here. I could do this. I could go do some survivals. I could go fishing. I could you get the idea. So, um, is there any questions? If not, uh, we're good to go. For the Warframes, are you farming their blueprints at those planets? No. Major rule of thumb just rule of thumb please this doesn't apply to everything rule of thumb if you're looking for blueprints they're in the market so if you're looking for frost he's in the market so you look for where is frost here and then you buy the blueprint here if you look to farm for components of warframes that's on assassinations rule of thumb blueprints market this doesn't apply to everything because uh, the amount of times I get this, it stresses me out. There's always one person who's like, actually, guys, uh, save me some time. All right, please save me some time. Blueprints, market, components, assassinations. One last time, this does not apply for everything, okay? But it will help you. If you're new to the game, that's what I would do. How do you get the Warframes on planets? Quests? No, assassinations. If you wanted Frost, you need to go and do this assassination. If you want Excalibur, you need to do this assassination. If you want Mag, you need to go and do this assassination. Do you understand? If you want Hydroids, you need to go and do this assassination. If you want Rhino, you need to go and do this assassination. Keep in mind, components, chassis, neuro optics, systems, only those things. That's what you get from the assassinations. Okay, blueprints are market. You buy the blueprint. From there, you then build them down in your foundry. Okay, but there's only one Warframe that I want right now, which is Frost. 
So I will I will actually show you me at least me trying to get frost. All right. Um, however, um, we have we generally have run out of time. We've run, it's four hours long. I don't know if you guys want these longer or if you guys want these shorter. I don't want to push people away because these are quite long and I have to timestamp everything and it takes me a while. So I want to go and say a couple of things real quick. Number one, if you guys enjoyed this series today, please go ahead and leave a like. I'd really appreciate it. Um, I always want to try and get like to a hundred likes per episode. And currently, right now, we're not we're not far off forty likes. So if it's not too much, go ahead and ask. If you had a good time today, if you've not yet done it, please go and leave a like on the video. If you know anybody that could go ahead and benefit from this series, um, please go share with them. If you know there's somebody, there's like a clan member who says something. If you know there's a forums out there, that allows advertising by all means. Please don't just spam my shit in other people's areas. That's not fair. Okay. And be respectful with advertisement, but you'd be helping me and I'd be very thankful. Don't feel like you owe me anything though, because you don't. I'm doing this stuff because I'm enjoying it as well. Uh, and I just want to help. Um, but yeah, share it on Twitters or social medias, whatever, anything else like that. Um, what else is there? Uh, today's episode covered quite a few things, which was nice. We got a couple of quests done. Um, we opened up uh, another junction, which is good. Uh, ideally, I'd like to go and do more. But like I said, we're, we're reaching that grind of Warframe. Um, next episode, um, if I missed anything this episode, by the way, if I said, oh, I was going to go and do something and I forgot to do it, please go ahead and let me know inside the comment section. I can just clear it up. But um, next episode is the Viri only. We are clicking this and we are doing the Daviri Paradox. Everything and anything Daviri Paradox is going to be covered. Where's the best place to get intrinsics? What should you be doing here? What should you be looking for? How do I farm this? What's an R01? What is Spiral? What is Circuits? Where are Incarnans from? What is this route? What is that? Who's Drifter? What is Cave? Everything is all covered in that episode. Next week, Wednesday, be there. Everything and any do anything. I'm only going to do one episode of Daviri. I'm not leaving Daviri until I'm confident enough that you guys understand what Daviri is actually about. But I'm going to echo it one last time. There's a reason why I didn't start with Daviri. Because I've got to do this at some point anyways. So these were the first three episodes. Hopefully this gives you a welcome and introduction into Warframe. I'm going to do Daviri on episode four. And then episode five... I don't have any more plans after episode five. So I don't really know if you guys want me to focus on something or if you guys would like me to do more, but I guess it really depends on how well the Daviri episode does. I'm hoping the Daviri episode does very well because, um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to go ahead and get a bit more attention on the series. But um, either way, I hope you guys have been enjoying this so far. I'm going to stop rambling. Massive thank you for all of the people who have been here and come to hang out and... Um, uh, yeah, thank you for all of the likes. Thank you for the subscriptions earlier. Um, thank you guys for checking out the video and share it around. But um, I'm going to go and stop rambling. I will catch you guys again later, all right? Any support is much appreciated. But have a wonderful evening, everybody. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Daviri. Oh, my goodness. I'm excited. We're there. We're there. I'll see you guys later. Bye, everybody. Take care of yourselves, all right? Bye, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Oh, dearie me.